Want to speak real Turkish from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at TurkishClass101.com. Hi everyone! Do you know how to say I love you in Turkish? In this lesson, you'll learn three different ways to say it. Let's start with how to express your feelings to your loved one. Seni seviyorum. Seni seviyorum. Seni seviyorum. Or, if you want to explain those butterflies in your stomach, you can say Senden hoşlanıyorum. Senden hoşlanıyorum. Senden hoşlanıyorum. And when you feel that I love you is not enough, you can say Sana olan sevgimi kelimelerle tarif edemem. Sana olan sevgimi kelimelerle tarif edemem. Sana olan sevgimi kelimelerle tarif edemem. Hey guys, merhaba, nasılsınız? Welcome to Turkish Weekly Words. The lesson is a surprise for me. I don't know what I'm going to talk about because like it's a surprise as I told you. So let's find out together. Months of the year. Yılın ayları. Başlayalım. Let's start. Eylül. September. We actually use this word as like a girl name in Turkish. There are some Turkish girls whose name is September. <laughs> We use it, yeah. And I think it's a pretty name actually. Eylül adında bir arkadaşım var. I have a friend whose name is Eylül. Dün. Haziran. I like summertime. Maybe it's because I was born in summer. So June is kind of my favorite. Not my favorite. My second favorite. After my birthday. Haziran'da hava çok sıcaktır. Weather is very hot in June. Aralık. December. So it's Christmas time, maybe, right? But we don't celebrate Christmas. So too bad, right? <laughs> we celebrate New Year, actually, but we don't celebrate December 25. Aralıkta, İstanbul'da kar yağar. In December, it snows in Istanbul, but it doesn't snow at all in where I came from, Antalya, Ocak. January. My mom's birthday, January 27. Yeah, I'm not gonna say her age. <laughs> Maybe she'll be angry. Ocak'ta annemin doğum günü var. My mom's birthday is in January. Ağustos. August. And my birthday is in August. Remember well. <laughs> Benim doğum günüm 16 Ağustos'ta. My birthday is August 16. And um, I'm a Leo. Actually, I don't believe in but I'm a Leo. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's all for this video. And if you want to watch more videos, please visit TurkishClass101.com. See you guys in the next video. Görüşürüz. Kendinize iyi bakın. Take care. Bye bye. <laughs> Hi everybody. I'm Selim from TurkishClass101.com. Do you know what monsters Turkish people are scared of? In this lesson, you'll learn about three scary monsters in Turkey. Let's start with the most popular monster. Gulyabani. Gulyabani. It can be translated as ghoul in English. It's a giant with a long beard and he carries a staff. He hounds travelers and eats human flesh. That sounds pretty scary, right? You might have heard about the next monster. The next one is Al Karısı. Al Karısı. This translates as the woman of red. The woman in red hounds female horses and other women after childbirth. Also, this female spirit hounds babies after they are born. Okay, here is the last monster. Hortlak. Hortlak. 
Have you heard of this next one? This translates to zombie in English. The hard luck is a poltergeist that rises from the grave. It's usually the restless spirit of an unhappy dead person. Often the hard luck can change shape or become invisible. It leaves off of blood and eats raw flesh. Let's wrap up this lesson by recapping what we've learned. Listen to the names of each monster and repeat after me. Gu Gulyabani Gulyabani Woman in red Alkarisa Alkarisa Zombie Hot luck Hot luck Well done! Do you know how Turkish people celebrate Halloween? Celebrating Halloween is not a Turkish tradition, but the locals enjoy it with expatriate friends and foreigners. Big parties are thrown at private homes or restaurants. And that's it! We just learned about three of the scariest monsters in Turkey. Now learn Turkish twice as fast by downloading all your PDF cheat sheets, including survival phrases, pickup lines, business, etiquette, and more. Check out the description below and go to turkishclass101.com now. I'll see you next time. Bir dahaki dersimize kadar görüşmek üzere. Hello everyone, this is Celine and welcome to Turkish Weekly Words. So as usual, I don't know the topic of the lesson yet. It's a surprise for me as well. So let's find out together. Solar system. Okay. In Turkish, we say Güneş sistemi. Well, basically, Güneş means sun. So yeah, solar, same, solar system. Güneş sistemi. Dünya, Earth. In English, sometimes you can say earth and sometimes you say world, right? But we don't have different words. We use the same one, dünya. So there are 7 billion people living in the world. Dünyada 7 milyar insan yaşıyor. Gezegen. Planet. Gezegen is planet. Planet is gezegen. Well, we used to have 9 planets, but since Pluto is not accepted as planet anymore, we have eight left, right? So let's say we have eight planets in our solar system. Güneş sistemimizde sekiz gezegen vardır. Mars. Mars. Maybe the pronunciation is a bit different. We don't say Mars, but instead we're saying like Mars. Do you think there are aliens on Mars? Sizce Mars'ta uzaylılar var mı? I said sizce. It's kind of formal, not so formal, but formal way of saying this sentence. If you want to say this sentence to your friend, then you should say sence instead of sizce. Sence Mars'ta uzaylılar var mı? Or sizce Mars'ta uzaylılar var mı? Uzaylı is alien. I think there are. But not in Mars. We are not alone. <laughs> Kuyruklu yıldız. Comet. Halley's comet is visible to naked eye from Earth in every 75 to 76 years. So let's say in Turkish. Halley, kuyruklu yıldızı, her 75 yılda bir çıplak gözle dünyadan görülebilir. Yıldız. Star. Starry night is Yıldızlı Gece. 
If it's a starry night, then the weather will be nice tomorrow. Eğer yıldızlı bir gece varsa, yarın hava güzel olacak demektir. Thank you so much for watching. Today we talked about the solar system. And if you guys want to learn Turkish more, if you want to watch more videos, then please visit turkishclass101.com. So see you guys in the next video. Bye bye. There must be aliens for sure. I'm sure. Hey guys, this is Celine and welcome to your Turkish weekly word as usual. I don't know the topic. It's a big surprise for me too. Let's find out together. Medicine. İlaç. Oh, I wonder what kind of words there are. By the way, in Turkish, we don't say taking medicine. We say içmek. We use içmek verb and it means drinking. So we say drinking medicine. Antibiotic. Antibiotic. Çocukken çok fazla antibiotik içtim. When I was a child, I took antibiotic a lot. Soğuk algınlığı ilacı. Cold medicine. If you just go to a pharmacy and if you say, oh, I got cold, do you have any cold medicine? Soğuk algınlığı ilacınız var mı? Do you have cold medicine? Or you can use, do you have a medicine for cold? Soğuk algınlığınız için bir ilaç var mı? Soğuk algınlığı için ilacınız var mı? Öksürük şurubu. Cough syrup. Let's say cough syrups have a very sour taste. <laughs> Öksürük şurubunun çok ekşi bir tadı vardır. Aşı. Vaccine. Aşılar sizi birçok virüsten korur. Vaccines protect you from many viruses. Ağrı kesici. Painkiller. Kesmek means basically killing it or cutting. Cut or kill. Kesmek. Ağrı is like um, pain, hurt. Ağrı kesici is like painkiller. I like painkillers so much. They're a life savior. <laughs> no, I don't recommend, of course. Okay, I think this is all for today. And thank you guys for watching the video. If you want to watch more videos, please visit turkishclass101.com. See you guys in the next video. Bye-bye. Hmm. Is there a medicine that you like? <laughs> medicine I like. Yes, painkiller. Hi, everyone. This is Celine, and welcome to Turkish Weekly Words. So let's find out today's topic. Home tools are my favorite topic. Çekiç. Hammer. Çekiç. A hammer is used to drive nails. Çivi çakmak için çekiç kullanılır. Çivi çakmak için çekiç kullanılır. Tık, tık, tık, tık, tık, tık. Testere. Saw. A saw is used to cut trees. Testere. Ağaç kesmek için kullanılır. Which is actually not good, but it's just an example. Tornavida. Screwdriver. A screwdriver is a tool for removing screws. Tornavida, çivileri sökmek için kullanılır. Tornavida, çivileri sökmek için kullanılır. Mezura. Tape measure. So actually there are two types of tape measures. One of them is made of plastic and more flexible and the other one is like self-retracting uh, tape measure. So for the plastic one we say mezura and for the other one we generally use metre. Metre, mezura. So with a tape measure you can measure your waist. Let's say with a tape measure, you can measure your waist. Mezura ile belinizi ölçebilirsiniz. Ding, ding. Ding, ding, ding. I got fat. Alet kutusu. Toolbox. Every Turkish father has a toolbox. Yes. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't think it's true, but generally. Her Türk babasının bir alet kutusu vardır. <laughs> so that's all for today and thank you guys for watching. Uh, if you want to watch more videos, please visit turkishclass101.com. See you. Bye bye. Hi everyone, this is Celine and welcome to Turkish Weekly Words. Are you ready to learn Turkish? 
Then let's find out today's topic. Studying a language. Dil öğrenmek. Yes, that's what we are doing right now. <laughs> Studying a language. Okumak. Read. I like to read and I like to learn foreign languages actually. Do you know I can speak Japanese somehow? <laughs> Do you guys like to read? If you want to say, I can speak Turkish, but I cannot read, then you go like that. Türkçe konuşabiliyorum ama okuyamıyorum. Tekrar etmek. Repeat. Yes, you should repeat all these Turkish words, right? That I'm teaching you. So, repeat after me. <laughs> okay, if you want to say repeat after me, then you say Benden sonra tekrar edin. Repeat after me. Benden sonra tekrar edin. Ders. Lesson. Do you like Turkish lessons? Türkçe derslerini seviyor musunuz? Let's say it more like in natural Turkish. Türkçe derslerini seviyor musunuz? Do you like my Turkish lessons? <gülüyor> Yüksek sesle okumak. Read aloud. Yeah, I think it's helpful if you want to learn a Turkish. No, I mean if you want to learn any foreign language. Can you read aloud this sentence? Bu cümleyi yüksek sesle okuyabilir misin? Konuşmak. Speaking. How many languages can you speak? Kaç tane dil konuşabiliyorsun? I can speak Turkish, <gülüyor> English, and German, and Japanese. Hallo, ich bin Selin und ich komme aus der Türkei. Freut mich. <gülüyor> How about Japanese? I'm gonna make self-introduction. Are you ready? <gülüyor> Konnichiwa. Watashi no namae wa Selin desu. 24 sai desu. Dance o suru no ga daisuki desu. Yoroshiku onegai shimasu. <gülüyor> Yay. <gülüyor> so, yes, over. I'm really curious how many languages can you speak. So, if you just read a comment below, then I'm gonna read all of them. <gülüyor> if you wanna see more videos, Please don't forget to visit turkishclass101.com I hope to see you guys in the next video. Bye bye! Hi everyone! Do you know the 1000 most useful phrases in Turkish? In this lesson, you'll be able to know all of them. So sit back, relax and have a cup of tea as you listen and learn. Banyo nerede? Affedersin. Harika! Rezervasyonum var. Bu ne kadar? Bu nedir? Teşekkür ederim. Gerçekten mi? Bana bir indirim yapabilir misiniz? Wi-Fi ücretsiz mi? Ben çeki alabilir miyim? Öneriniz var mı? You just learned the 1,000 most useful phrases in Turkish. And if you're interested in learning more, try learning the core 2,000 word list. With this, you'll understand 95% of the language. And best of all, this is not a joke. Check out the description below and go to turkishclass101.com now. See you next time. Hi everyone, how are you? This is Celine and welcome to Turkish Weekly Words. So, what we will learn today, I don't know yet. So, do you want to find out together? Let's start. Jobs. Yeah, it's very important, right? Jobs. Job is ish, your job, işin. Mühendis. Engineer. In Turkish, like it's kind of for me hard to say engineer, and my mom always used to make fun of me because I cannot say the word properly. Watch this, mom. I'm saying it properly now. Mühendis, <laughs> engineer. Let's be just simple. Let's say I am an engineer. Yeah. How do you say it? I am an engineer. Ben bir mühendisim. Ben bir mühendisim. I'm an engineer. Office çalışanı. Office worker. Office çalışanı. Office workers sit in the office all day. Office çalışanları 
her gün ofiste oturmak zorundadır. Ofis çalışanları her gün ofiste olmak zorundadır. Both are okay. Hemşire. Nurse. I always wanted to be a nurse when I was a child. Çocukken hemşire olmak isterdim. Çocukken hemşire olmak isterdim. Yeah, actually I did it. When I was in elementary school, there was like a school festival. And like teacher said, if you guys already have the costume, then I'm going to give you that role. So who, who has the nurse costume? Like she asked the class, but I really wanted to be the nurse, even though I didn't have. I said, I have. <laughs> and then, of course, my teacher made me the nurse. And I told my family that I need a nurse costume and we bought a new one. So I became the nurse. Polis memuru. Police officer. If you say polis, it's also okay. Police officers catch the criminals. Polisler suçluları yakalar. Polisler suçluları yakalar. Avukat. Lawyer. Avukat is lawyer. Benim avukat bir arkadaşım var. Benim avukat bir arkadaşım var. I have a lawyer friend. Thank you guys for watching the video. Um, if you want to watch more videos, please visit turkishclass101.com. I hope to see you guys in the next video. Bye bye. Is there any engineer who is watching this video? Hi everyone, this is Celine and welcome to Turkish Weekly Words. So today we will be talking about your face. Yüzün. Face is use. Yüzün your face. And our first word is göz. Eye. Can you see my eye color? My example is gözlerin çok güzel. Your eyes are very beautiful. <laughs> it's a compliment. You can say this to a lady, right? In Turkey, if you want to compliment to a lady that, oh, your eyes are very big, then we use the word eşek gözlü means donkey eye. <laughs> Do you know donkey? So it's kind of a good thing. If you say this, then they will be really thankful. They will say, oh really? Oh, thank you. It's like, oh, senin gözlerin eşek gözleri gibi. Yüz. Burun. Nose. If you are not happy with your nose, if you think it's too big, then you'll say like, oh, burnum çok büyük. My nose is too big. <laughs> Dudak. Lips. Dudak. Dudak. Dudak. Angelina Jolie'nin çok büyük dudakları var. Değil mi? Katılıyor musunuz? <gülüyor> Angelina Jolie has very big lips. Don't you agree? <gülüyor> Kaş. Eyebrow. Kaş. Can you see my eyebrow? My friends say my eyebrows are very thin actually, but I like that way. So they say, kaşların çok ince. It means like, oh, your eyebrows are very thin. Yanak. Cheek. For example, if we think that a girl has a very beautiful cheeks, you can say like, oh, yanakları kırmızı kırmızı. Which means, oh, like her, her cheeks are very red. To emphasize, we say the word twice. Kırmızı kırmızı. So kırmızı is red. So it's like red, red. The end. If you want to learn Turkish more, then please visit turkishclass101.com. Hope to see you in the next video. Bye bye. Want to speak real Turkish from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at turkishclass101.com. Herkese merhaba. Hi everyone. I'm Celine from turkishclass101.com. Today, I'm going to teach you 10 hardest words to pronounce. The first one is şoför, driver. O, ünlü bir iş adamının özel şoförü. He is the personal driver of a famous businessman. So, um, many Turkish people say şoför, actually, but it's not correct. So we say ö, ö, but it's actually o, ö. So it's going to be şoför, not şoför. So please be careful about that when you're learning Turkish.
Meşgul. Busy. Meşgulüm. Sonra konuşalım. I'm busy. Let's talk later. So, we say meşgul usually, and it's also not correct. We say ü, but it's actually u. So, meşgul, not meşgul. So, please be careful about that too. And meşgul is, um, I think, originally from Arabic language, if I'm not wrong. It's also not Turkish word. Japonya. Japan. Japonya'da yaşıyorum. I live in Japan. Um, so I think it is hard to pronounce because many foreigner people, they tend to say Japan, like Japonya. Especially, I heard Japanese people speaking Turkish and they say Japonya, but it's actually Japonya. So the letter J, we read as J, that is why it is going to be Japonya, not Japonya. Eczane, pharmacy. Eczane çoktan kapanmış. The pharmacy is already closed. So now I will tell you what mistakes we make in Turkish when we say eczane. For example, we say eczane, yazane, eczane, all wrong. The correct one is eczane. I know it's a bit hard to say, but do your best. Şemsiye. Umbrella. Şemsiyemi unuttum. I forgot my umbrella. Actually, it's a very basic word, right? Şemsi, umbrella, but yeah, it's because of the sh voice. I think it is hard to pronounce. Şemsiye, şemsiye. Memnun, content. Hayatımdan memnunum. I'm content with my life. Okay, so this one is um, also uh, not a Turkish word. I mean, the origins are different. It is Egyptian dialect. And I think it is hard to say for us, pronunciation I mean, because there are so many M's and N's in one word. Memnunum. I am content. Hard to pronounce if you are speaking fast. So the correct pronunciation is memnun. Yayla. Plateau. Çoban koyunlarını yaylaya çıkardı. The shepherd took the sheep to the plateau. Actually, we also say plato in Turkish, not just yayla. There are two words, but both are actually hard to pronounce, yayla and plato. So the correct pronunciation is yayla, yaylalar, plato. Karşılama. Greeting. Harika bir karşılama partisi hazırlayacağız. We will prepare a great welcome party. Um, I think, in my opinion, karşılama is the easiest one in this list. It is not very hard to pronounce. Maybe because of the, again, the sh voice and ı voice, it, it can be hard to pronounce, especially for foreigner people, because I know um, they don't have the ı voice. I think that is why it is hard to pronounce. Uh, the correct pronunciation is karşılama. It's ı. Karşılama. Su şişesi. Water bottle. Cam su şişeleri daha sağlıklı. Glass water bottles are healthier. This one is even hard for me to pronounce. It is, I think, the hardest one. And in Turkey, we have a, like a tongue twister. We are using this word. So now I will try to, I will try to challenge myself and I will try to say it for you. But if I fail, I'm very sorry. Uh, şu köşe yaz köşesi, şu köşe kış köşe, kı, ah, sorry, one more time. Şu köşe yaz köşesi, şu köşe kış köşesi, ortadaki su şişesi. Well, it's almost. Okay. <laughs> this corner is summer corner, and this corner is winter corner, and in the middle, there's a water bottle. <laughs> I know it doesn't make any sense, but since it is hard to pronounce, we have that kind of tongue twister. Şu köşe yaz köşesi, şu köşe kış köşesi, ortadaki su şişesi. Şu köşe yaz köşesi, şu köşe kış köşesi, ortadaki su şişesi. Good luck. <laughs> Ukala. Know it all. Ukalalık yapma. Stop acting like a know it all. The last vowel, L A. Usually we say la, but in this word you need to say it more softer, like la. But you start like like more harder way, like uka, and then you need to end it with more softer way, la. Ukala. I think that is why it is hard to pronounce for us. Okay, that's all for this lesson. I hope you learned a lot about the words that we cannot pronounce. Please try it at home. I'm sure you can do it. 
And if you want to watch more videos, please visit TurkishClass101.com if you want to learn more Turkish. And please don't forget to subscribe our channel. I hope to see you guys next time. Bye bye. You are at a bus terminal where you are waiting for your bus. There's a notice posted at the bus stop about a new bus route that will be introduced next year. What is the main advantage of this new bus route? What is the main advantage of this new bus route? The introduction of the new bus eases congestion for each bus on the 301 route. Yeni otobüs, 301 numaralı güzergahtaki her otobüsün doluluk oranını azaltıyor. Hi everyone, I'm Selin from TurkishClass101.com. Herkese merhaba. Today we will be talking about 10 questions you should know. Okay, let's start with the most basic one. Adın ne? What's your name? Adın ne? What's your name? Benim adım Selin. Senin adın ne? My name is Selin. What's your name? Nasılsın? How are you? Nasılsın? How are you? I think it is important to know this sentence because we usually ask each other how are you, how is going, so please know that one. Nasılsın? Ben iyiyim. Sen nasılsın? I'm good. How are you? Nerelisin? Where are you from? Nerelisin? Where are you from? Especially Turkish grandmothers, they ask a lot about this question because like, of course, not the country, I mean the city. Where are you from? Which city? Like, because they want to know everything, right? So I'm sure you'll hear this phrase a lot if you go to Turkey. Nerelisin? Nerelisin? Where are you from? Ben Antalyalıyım. Sen nerelisin? I am from Antalya. Where are you from? Doğum günün ne zaman? When is your birthday? Doğum günün ne zaman? When is your birthday? Benim doğum günüm 16 Ağustos. My birthday is August 16. Senin doğum günün ne zaman? When is your birthday? Nerede yaşıyorsun? Where do you live? Nerede yaşıyorsun? Where do you live? Ben Antalya'da yaşıyorum. Sen nerede yaşıyorsun? I live in Antalya. Where do you live? Nerede çalışıyorsun? Where do you work? The next one is Nerede çalışıyorsun? Where do you work? Ben otelde çalışıyorum. Sen nerede çalışıyorsun? I work in a hotel. Where do you work? Telefon numaran ne? What's your phone number? Telefon numaran ne? What is your phone number? Well, don't accept from me to say my phone number. <laughs> but actually, if you if you want to become with a Turkish person, then you ask like after after some chat, you ask the phone number usually, right? Like, oh, what is your phone number so we can talk? But nowadays, I think people usually ask, do you have Facebook <laughs> or do you have WhatsApp like this? Uh, and you can ask in Turkish like this. Facebook kullanıyor musun? WhatsApp kullanıyor musun? It means like, do you have Facebook? Are you using Facebook? I think it's more 
natural nowadays to say in Turkish if you want to if you want to become friends with someone. Türkçe nerede öğrendin? Where did you learn Turkish? Türkçe nerede öğrendin? Where did you learn Turkish? Türkçe benim ana dilim. Sen Türkçe nerede öğrendin? Turkish is my mother tongue. Where did you learn Turkish? Çok güzel konuşuyorsun. You speak very well. Türk yemeklerini seviyor musun? Do you like Turkish food? Türk yemeklerini seviyor musun? Do you like Turkish food? Evet, Türk yemeklerini seviyorum. En çok sarmayı seviyorum. Yes, I like Turkish foods. And my favorite is sarma. Do you know sarma? Sarma is like cabbage roll or grape roll. So you stuff and wrap like leaves and you put meat or rice inside. It's a very delicious Turkish food. Türk yemeklerini seviyor musunuz? En sevdiğiniz Türk yemeği ne? What is your favorite Turkish food? Kaç yaşındasın? How old are you? Kaç yaşındasın? How old are you? 26 yaşındayım. Sen kaç yaşındasın? I am 26 years old. How old are you? So we're done for today. Congrats! Now you know 10 questions you should know in Turkish. Tell me all the answers to my questions. I'll be waiting and I hope to see you next time. Please don't forget to subscribe our channel and if you want to learn more Turkish, please visit turkishclass101.com. Bye-bye! Want to speak real Turkish from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at turkishclass101.com. You've decided to study a new language. So now what? Well, you want to become fluent fast, right? Here are the top five shortcuts to learning a language. Number one, create a study schedule and set some goals. Many language learners are unorganized. Creating a schedule allows you to free up time to study consistently. Goals give you motivation and something to strive for. Number two, make it fun. If you learn how to make your study time enjoyable, chances are you'll be more inclined to study. Watch a TV show with subtitles or listen to some music. Number three, find a language partner. This is the best way to improve your conversation skills. It will help you gain fluency even faster and increase confidence when speaking. Number four, use word lists to build up a solid vocabulary. This is a great way to build up your fluency, one word at a time. Luckily, we have all the word lists you need with a range of topics from food to love. Choose whichever language you want to study and go. Number five, don't be afraid to make mistakes. Nothing helps you improve more than correcting your own errors. You're more likely to remember it correctly the next time around. Everyone makes mistakes. Don't be afraid to learn from them. There's no magical way to learn a new language overnight, but doing all of these can really help your learning process. And remember, if you're interested in getting on the fast track to fluency, sign up for your free lifetime account, no credit card required, and you'll get the best free online resources. Start learning now. Herkese merhaba. Hello everyone. I'm Selin from turkishclass101.com. Today, we're going to talk about 10 phrases you never want to hear. Okay, let's go with the first one. This one I never want to hear. Son zamanlarda kilo mu aldın? Have you gained weight recently? Son zamanlarda kilo mu aldın? Have you gained weight recently? Oh, don't tell me ever, ever, ever. I hate this phrase and I'm sure many Turkish girls hate this phrase. Actually, like in Turkey, if you have friends that you didn't see for a long time and when you see each other again they use this phrase a lot somehow like oh you gained weight or you lost weight like this so ah kilo mu aldın ah kilo mu verdin like this so no don't don't say it to me ever please <laughs> okay next one saçında beyaz var saçında beyaz var you have a gray hair 
No, it means I'm getting old. <gülüyor> Saçında beyaz var. Mm, maybe you shouldn't say to the usually like middle-aged Turkish woman because I think they are, then they're not gonna like it. No, don't say it. Ben sana dedim. I told you so. Ben sana dedim. It means I told you so. Oh, you hear from Turkish mothers a lot. And I heard a lot. Okay, here it goes. Ben sana dedim. It means I told you so. They use it a lot. So like, first they warn you to not do something. Like, no, don't go there or don't do this. And then you do eventually. And they say, I told you so. I told you so. I told you not to do. So they use it a lot. I'm sure... Turkish people who are watching this video, they understand me very well. Ama ben sana dedim. Ben sana yapma dedim. In this kind of tone of voice, they say, Ben sana gitme dedim. Yapma dedim. You hear a lot. Kovuldum. You're fired. Kovuldum. You're fired. I mean, who likes to hear this, right? In any language, you don't want to hear it. Kovuldum. Or, okay, so if you are too proud to be fired, then you can say, No, you cannot fire me, I quit. Okay, your boss is saying to you, Kovuldun. Hayır, sen beni kovamazsın. Ben istifa ediyorum. It's very cliche in Turkish. Very cliche. Sorun sen değilsin. Benim. It is not you, it is me. Sorun sen değilsin. Benim. It's not you. It is me. Oh, who likes to hear this sound, right? Sorun sen değilsin benim. Or there's one more breakup phrase. And girls also like hate to hear that. No, I'm gonna say it to you. It is Sen benden daha iyilerine layıksın. It means you deserve better than me. Oh, really? Seriously? No. <laughs> Başvurunuz için teşekkür ederiz. Ancak bu pozisyon doldu. Thank you for your resume. However, the position has been filled. Başvurunuz için teşekkür ederiz. Ancak bu pozisyon doldu. Thank you for your resume. However, the position has been filled. Oh, I heard it a lot when I was searching for a job. Or there is one more I would like to share it with you. Like, you went to an interview and then you're waiting for the results. After the interview, they will tell you like okay we will call you back we also don't want to hear that one too and we say in turkish biz size döneriz biz size döneriz it means we'll call you back and we don't want to hear that one too no başka insanlarla görüşmeliyiz we should see other people başka insanlarla görüşmeliyiz we should see other people yok ya olmaz öyle şey <laughs> no no, no, no. Have you ever had a Turkish girlfriend? You cannot say this. One minute later, you'll be that. That's all. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Bugün paranı veremeyeceğim. I don't have your money today. Bugün paranı veremeyeceğim. I don't have your money today. Um. Well, I think in terms of money, well, of course, I mean, everyone wants their money back. But if it's a close friend or if it's like a family member, then Turkish people are a bit more tolerant. Like they wait and then they get angry. <laughs> so they're more tolerant about money. If you say, oh, I'm sorry, I cannot give your money back today, then they will be, I think, tolerant first. So, bugün paranı veremeyeceğim. Maybe then you should say, özür dilerim. It means, oh, I'm sorry. Then they will understand. Bugün fazla mesaiye kalabilir misin? Can you work overtime today? Bugün fazla mesaiye kalabilir misin? Can you work overtime today? Yeah, sure. I was born to work. I love overtime. Uh, mesai, it's the word that many Turkish people hate. Extra work, right? Um, however, if you ask me that if there are so many people who are doing overtime in Turkey, I would say probably yes. But not so much. Of course, it depends on the business field. But especially like private companies, um, yes, they do a lot of overtime work. Patron seni çağırıyor. The boss is calling you. Patron seni çağırıyor. The boss is calling you. 
okay, maybe it's not bad, right? Maybe it's good news. So it's not that bad to hear, I think. Don't be very hopeless about it. Maybe they will give you like a bonus. Bonus means ikramie in Turkish. So it's so sad, right? It's not that bad. Okay, that's all for today. We talked about the phrases, sentences you never want to hear. And I hope this video was helpful to you. And I hope to see you in the next video. Please don't forget to subscribe our channel. And then please visit turkishclass101.com if you want to learn Turkish more. I hope to see you guys next time. Bye bye. Hi everybody. I'm Celine from turkishclass101.com. Do you know how to say I love you in Turkish? In this lesson, you'll learn three different ways to say I love you and a special phrase for Valentine's Day. Let's start with the most common phrase. Seni seviyorum. Seni seviyorum. I love you. This phrase is direct. You should use it only when you're confessing your love. If you want to be less direct, you can use this phrase. Sen benim için çok şey ifade ediyorsun. Sen benim için çok şey ifade ediyorsun. It means you mean so much to me. Now, if you want to be more romantic in expressing your love for someone, you can use this phrase. Sana olan sevgimi kelimelerle tarif edemem. Sana olan sevgimi kelimelerle tarif edemem. It means words cannot describe my love for you. Now you know three different ways to say I love you in Turkish. And here is one more. What if you want to spend Valentine's Day with someone special? In that case, you can say Sevgililer gününü benimle geçirir misin? Sevgililer gününü benimle geçirir misin? It means, will you be my Valentine? Let's wrap up this lesson by recapping what we have learned. Listen to the expression and repeat after me. I love you. Seni seviyorum. Seni seviyorum. You mean so much to me. Sen benim için çok şey ifade ediyorsun. Sen benim için çok şey ifade ediyorsun. Words cannot describe my love for you. Sana olan sevgimi kelimelerle tarif edemem. Sana olan sevgimi kelimelerle tarif edemem. Will you be my Valentine? Sevgililer gününü benimle geçirir misin? Sevgililer gününü benimle geçirir misin? Well done! Here is a fun fact. Do you know how Turkish people show their love on Valentine's Day? They buy gifts for each other and write love messages on cards. Flowers, chocolates, and heart-shaped toys are among the most popular presents in Turkey. Most people like having a romantic dinner together. You just learned three different ways to say I love you in Turkish and one special phrase for Valentine's Day. I'll see you next time. Hoşçakalın! Uh, but it was good. <laughs> by repeat, <laughs> sorry, we can hear it uh, again. I wanted this bag so much, give it to me. <laughs> <laughs>
Kebab man, you're from here. <laughs> Don't worry, it's still romantic though. <laughs> yeah. And then like I agree. Thing. Mm, sure, sure. And that was it for today. If you want to see Kebab Man more, please subscribe our channel and don't forget to visit TurkishClass101.com. I'll see you there. Bye. Goodbye. <laughs> Eat more kebab. Hello everyone. Herkese tekrardan merhaba. Selin is here from TurkishClass101.com. Today we're going to talk about 10 phrases you always want to hear. Bugün harika görünüyorsun. You look great today. Okay, the first one. Bugün harika görünüyorsun. You look great today. Well, then it's really um, a great phrase to increase your motivation, I think. You can say it to your girlfriend, um, your mother. I mean, everyone you love. So it's, it's a very nice Turkish phrase, I think. It will make everyone happy, believe me. Seni özlüyorum. I miss you. Seni özlüyorum. I miss you. Well, actually, it is a nice phrase and it is kind of sad that you're missing someone. Mm, seni özlüyorum. Uh, or you can say after seni özlüyorum. Seni görmek istiyorum. I want to see you. So it will increase the effect of the first phrase. Seni özlüyorum. Seni görmek istiyorum. I miss you. I want to see you. Harika bir iş çıkardın. You did a great job. Harika bir iş çıkardın. You did a great job. I like to hear that from my boss or from my teacher at school. Harika bir iş çıkardın. Ayın sonunda bir ikramiye verilecek. There will be a bonus at the end of the month. Ayın sonunda bir ikramiye verilecek. There will be a bonus at the end of the month. İkramiye um, it's a wonderful word, first of all, let me say. And uh, we say bonus too. But the spelling, uh, the pronunciation is a bit different for us. We say bonus or ikramiye. Both are same, same meaning. But I think bonus uh, comes from the English one. But both are, because have the same meaning, you can use both. So ikramiye verilecek, bonus verilecek, same meaning. Biraz dinlen. Temizliği bugün ben yapacağım. Take a break. I'll do the cleaning today. Biraz dinlen. Temizliği bugün ben yapacağım. Take a break. I'll do the cleaning today. Oh, it's wonderful. Please do. There are so many things to do, right? I mean, especially uh, in Turkish houses. Like, we have, we like large houses. So, there are lots of things to do. In terms of cleaning, I think. Cleaning, washing and everything. So if someone tells you like, take a break, I'll do the cleaning today. It's like, oh, thank you. Awesome. So, bugün ben yapacağım. Sen dinlenebilirsin. It means you can take a break. Ve sen kazandın. And you win. Ve sen kazandın. And you win. What would you like to win? I would like to win a competition, actually. I like to compete. So you can say someone like who win a competition, a contest. Ve sen kazandın. Or lottery. Like if you win lottery, you can use the same phrase again. Ve sen kazandın. Haklıydın. You were right. Haklıydın. You were right. Um, this is, I'm sure, um, Turkish girls will understand me again because, like, we would like to hear that we are right or Turkish guys think that we'd like to hear we are right. So it is also another cliche phrase in Turkish, like, uh, you, want, you just want to hear you're right. Mm, I think that's why they think it will make us happy to hear. Ve sen haklısın, haklıydın, you were right. Sana özel bir şey getirdim. I brought you something special. Sana özel bir şey getirdim. I brought you something special. It can be a present, right? So we say hediye, armağan, both mean present. You can say sana hediye getirdim. Sana armağan getirdim. Or sana özel bir şey getirdim. It will make 
any person happy to get a present. Sen olmasan ne yapardım? What would I do without you? Sen olmasan ne yapardım? What would I do without you? Wow, very romantic, right? So you would like to use this phrase for who? But for me, I would like to use it for my mother, actually. Yeah. So I would like to say to her now. Sen olmasan ne yapardım? Ah, mother. <laughs> Hello, happy. are you watching? <laughs> Yaşını göstermiyorsun. You don't show your age. Yaşını göstermiyorsun. You don't show your age. Um, I know this sentence, I know this one, this phrase makes many people happy. But when I was in Turkey, for example, they always um, told me that I don't look my age. So I look younger and I really hate that. I don't know why, because I think in Turkey, we don't have a very like sweet, cute look, but we instead we prefer more like a cool, serious or more like a womanish look. And if I look like a teenager, even though I'm a university student, then I'm not going to be happy about it, right? So I think um, if you say this phrase to everyone, then it doesn't mean that it will make everyone happy. But of course, if you say it to like a maybe middle-aged person, like 30, 40, if you say, oh, you look younger or you don't look your age, then I think it will make those people happy. Yaşını göstermiyorsun. Okay, that's all for today. I think this lesson was very uh, fun, full of motivation. I hope you liked it. Tell me which one is your favorite phrase. Okay, in my case, my favorite one is uh, Sen olmasan ne yapardım? Because I'm saying this to my mom. So tell me your favorite one. And I hope to see you guys in the next video. If you want to learn Turkish more, then please don't forget to visit our website, turkishclass101.com. And please don't forget to subscribe our channel if you want to watch more videos. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. You just got off a bus at the closest stop to your friend's new house, where he's invited you to a party. Which direction should you head to get to your friend's new house? Which direction should you head to get to your friend's new house? Although the East Road would have normally been the closest road, it's currently under construction, so you should take the South Road instead. Güney yolunu tercih et. Hi everyone, I'm Selene from TurkishClass101.com. Herkese merhaba. Today, I'm going to teach you 10 phrases to amaze native speakers. Okay, so let's amaze me. Geçmiş olsun. Get well soon. The first one is, Geçmiş olsun. Get well soon. I think it's a very basic one, right? When I get sick, if you tell me, Geçmiş olsun Selin. Then I will be very amazed. <laughs> Boş ver. Don't mind. Boş ver. Don't mind. Oh, maybe that's my favorite. So if somebody, if a foreigner comes to me and say Boş ver in my bad mood, then I will be very amazed. Kurt gibi açım. I'm hungry as a wolf. Kurt gibi açım. I'm hungry as a wolf. Um, I'm not sure the, they use this phrase in English. Maybe they don't even use. But it's the exact translation. 
we use this phrase to make other people understand we are very hungry. Kurt gibi açım. And that's what I am always, all the time. <laughs> ben her zaman kurt gibi açım. It means I am always very hungry. I am always as hungry as a wolf. Beklemekten ağaç oldum. I've turned into a tree while waiting here for so long. Beklemekten ağaç oldum. I've turned into a tree while waiting here so long. I know it doesn't have any meaning in English. Uh, but we are using it to make other people understand that we are waiting here for so long time. So we we turn into a tree. <laughs> I think it's because like the tree has roots, right? So if if tree wants to live, then it needs its roots. So it's gonna be its home. So it means now we have roots. Now it's our home. So we're waiting here so long time. Like that is why we are using this phrase. Beklemekten ağaç oldum. I'm a tree now. Can you see? <gülüyor> Çok yaşa. God bless you. Çok yaşa. God bless you. Um, we say it when we sneeze. Okay, in Turkish, um, Çok yaşa doesn't mean God bless you. It's not the direct translation. Uh, it means live long. So when you sneeze, we actually wish you a long life. Çok yaşa. Why we do that? <gülüyor> ne olur? Please, I beg you. Ne olur? Please, I beg you. Like you want to go somewhere very much and you're asking permission from your mom. Oh, mom, I beg you, just once, let me go. Ne olur, bir kere gideyim. Or, um... Like, for example, there is something you want to eat so much. Uh, you want to taste. Then, ne olur bir kere tadayım. Let me, let me taste once, please, I beg you. Like this. So, not just ne olur itself, but also with the other words and phrases. You can use it together. You can also add ne olur ya, ne olur. But it is more like um like a, like a daily Turkish. It's not maybe grammatically correct. Why we use it? Ne olur ya? Ne olur yapayım? Ne olur gideyim? Or ne olur, ne olur? You really want it badly. It sounds like that. Başım şişti. I've got a headache because of the noise. Başım şişti. I've got a headache because of the noise. Hmm, that's maybe, yeah, it's, it looks like a phrase that the parents use for their children. Başım şişti. Or, uh, like, for example, somebody listens music very loudly, your friend, and you're kind of angry, like, oh my god, I have a headache because of that, stop it. You say, başım şişti ya, başım şişti. Like that. Yeah. <laughs> falan filan. Etc, etc. Falan filan. Etc, etc. It's very common in Turkish language. Very, very common. You can use it basically with everything. For example, um, somebody asks you, like, what did you buy from the supermarket? And you say, um, watermelon, fish, um, chips, etc. Then you say, um, let's say, carpus, uh, chips, falan, filan. You say like this. Uh, you're talking about a situation. You're telling your friend like some story or something happened. Like, oh, okay, he went there and then he bought this. And then this happened, etc, etc. Then again we use falan filan. So now I will speak Turkish. I will to give an example. Um, i̇şe gitmiş, patronuyla konuşmuş, hasta olmuş, eve gelmiş. Falan filan. It means like he went job, he talked with the boss, and then he got sick, he went back home, etc., etc. So you can use like this too. Yok artık. No way, really? Yok artık. No way, really? It shows that you're very surprised with the situation. You cannot believe it. Like yok artık. Or um, like. You're very shocked with the amount of something. 
uh, let's say your friend bought five bags like she went shopping and she she bought five bags and you say yok artık it's like too much did you buy five bags ne güzel how lovely ne güzel how lovely for example if you say what a nice weather then you say ne güzel bir hava then it becomes like how nice how nice weather uh, or if you say ne güzel bir kız what a lovely girl or one more example if you say ne güzel bir hikaye you say what a good story so it has many meanings actually it depends on where you use the phrase that's all for today i hope this video will be helpful for you so um, tell me which phrase would you use to amaze me so falan filan like etc etc i think if i hear this from a foreign people then i think i will be very amazed so tell me your ideas about it and if you want to watch more videos please don't forget to subscribe our channel if you want to learn turkish more then please visit turkishglass101.com i hope to see you guys in the next time in the next video bye bye take care <laughs>Sana olan sevgimi kelimelerle tarif edemem. Sana olan sevgimi kelimelerle tarif edemem. It means words cannot describe my love for you. Now you know three different ways to say I love you in Turkish. And here is one more. What if you want to spend Valentine's Day with someone special? In that case, you can say Sevgililer gününü benimle geçirir misin? Sevgililer gününü benimle geçirir misin? It means, will you be my valentine? Let's wrap up this lesson by recapping what we have learned. Listen to the expression and repeat after me. I love you. Seni seviyorum. Seni seviyorum. You mean so much to me. Sen benim için çok şey ifade ediyorsun. Sen benim için çok şey ifade ediyorsun. Words cannot describe my love for you. Sana olan sevgimi kelimelerle tarif edemem. Sana olan sevgimi kelimelerle tarif edemem.
Will you be my valentine? Sevgililer gününü benimle geçirir misin? Sevgililer gününü benimle geçirir misin? Well done. Here is a fun fact. Do you know how Turkish people show their love on Valentine's Day? They buy gifts for each other and write love messages on cards. Flowers, chocolates and heart-shaped toys are among the most popular presents in Turkey. Most people like having a romantic dinner together. You just learned three different ways to say I love you in Turkish and one special phrase for Valentine's Day. Also, don't forget to download your free cheat sheet on how to be a good lover in Turkey, including words for romance, compliments, and pickup lines. Check out the description below and go to TurkishClass101.com now. I'll see you next time. Hoşçakalın! <laughs> By repeat, <laughs> sorry, we <laughs> can hear it uh, again. I wanted this back so much, give it to me. <laughs> Kebab man, give from here. <laughs> Don't worry, it's still romantic though. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Mm, sure, sure. And that was it for today. If you want to see Kebab Man more, please subscribe our channel and don't forget to visit TurkishClass101.com I'll see you there. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Eat more kebab. Hi everybody, I'm Selin from TurkishClass101.com Welcome to another Turkish lesson. Today we will be talking about must know expressions for agreeing and disagreeing. Sana tamamen katılıyorum. I completely agree with you. Sana tamamen katılıyorum. Sana tamamen katılıyorum. I completely agree with you. So you're using the sentence to show that you agree with that person, right? Uh, we can use it without tamamen, sana katılıyorum. It means I agree with you. Or you don't even have to use sana and tamamen. Just say katılıyorum and it means, yeah, I agree. Katılıyorum. Evet, katılıyorum. Valla ben pek emin değilim. Well, I'm not sure. Valla ben pek emin değilim. Well, I'm not sure. So if you're using valla, this word, when you're speaking, then uh, I think all Turkish people will think um, you're really good at speaking Turkish because valla it's really casual way uh, to say well in Turkish. So uh, you can use it with other sentences as well, like um, valla ben sana katılmıyorum. Mm, valla pek emin değilim. The first sentence means well I don't agree with you, and the second one is well I'm not sure. Mm, valla pek emin değilim. Valla sana katılmıyorum. Elbette. Of course. Elbette. Elbette. Of course. So we have other ways of saying of course. Uh, for example, tabi ki. Tabi ki. Elbette. Both means of course. So how can you know which one to use? It depends on the conversation, unfortunately. So you have to first understand the conversation and then you can decide which one to use. Elbette, tabi ki. For example, your friend invited you to a party and he is asking you, are you coming tomorrow? And you can say, elbette, elbette geliyorum. Yeah, I'm coming tomorrow, of course. Well, our second example will be about tabi ki. So, um, your friend is asking you, uh, does your mom know about that? Annen biliyor mu bu konu hakkında? Annenin bir fikri var mı? Then you can answer, of course she knows. Tabii ki biliyor. Sanırım. I guess so. The next one is, sanırım. Sanırım. 
I guess so. Sanırım means like you're not sure about something, right? Hmm, sanırım. So let me give you an example about sanırım. You want to say, I forgot my bag at school, I think. I guess. Then you say like, hmm, sanırım çantamı okulda unuttum. Here it means, um, I guess, I think, I forgot my bag at school. Uh, but there is one more way to say, like, I guess, I'm not sure, like, I guess so. It is galiba. For example, um, I think, I guess, it will rain tomorrow. Then you say, galiba yarın yağmur yağacak. Here, um, well, it is the same meaning with sanırım. But um, sanırım yağmur yağacak is also not wrong. But I think galiba sounds more natural. Ben de onu diyecektim. I was just going to say that. Ben de onu diyecektim. I was just going to say that. I think it is also a very uh, like natural sounded sentence. I mean, if you if you say this sentence, then I think you will sound more natural when you speak Turkish. Oh, I was just going to say that. Ben de onu diyecektim. Or uh, you can add tam word uh, to the sentence. So it will be like this. Ben de tam onu diyecektim. Um, well, actually, there is almost no difference. But if you just add tam, it will be, I think, perfect, like more and more natural. Evet, haklısın. Yes, you're right. Evet, haklısın. Evet, haklısın. Yes, you're right. I think uh, most of us would like to hear that, right? <laughs> yes, you're right. Evet, haklısın. I think you can use this sentence to anyone. Evet, haklısın. But um, if you are talking with your manager or someone older than you, and if you want to be more polite, then maybe you can say, Evet, haklısınız. Evet, haklısınız. Yanlışın var. You're wrong. Yanlışın var. Yanlışın var. You're wrong. Let's say, your friend is saying that he saw you in the club last night. <laughs> like, oh, I saw you last night, right? It was you. And you can say, hayır, yanlışın var. O ben değildim. Which means, no, you're wrong. It was not me. Hayır, yanlışın var. Sanmıyorum. I don't think so. Sanmıyorum. Sanmıyorum. I don't think so. Your friend is saying, Did you get fat? <laughs> and you're saying, No, I don't think so. Hayır, sanmıyorum. No, I don't think so. Hayır, sanmıyorum. So, sanmıyorum literally means, I don't think so. But you can also use, Hmm, sanmam. Sanmam, it's a present tense of saying sanmıyorum. Sanmıyorum is like continuous tense. But both mean, I don't think so. No, I, I don't think so, no. Like this meaning, sanmam, is more casual. So I think it's better to use with friends. Sanmam. Belki. Maybe. Belki. Maybe. Belki. So, belki can be used in basically everything. It can be used for everything. You can say, um, you will come tomorrow night, like if your friend is asking you again. You can say, belki. Maybe. Or, um, you, will, you will go holiday. I mean, this summer, are you planning to go holiday? Yeah, maybe. Belki. You can also use the same word. It is very common in Turkey, and you can use it for everything. So I think it's a good word to remember. Katılıyorum. I agree. Katılıyorum. I agree. But although katılmıyorum sounds more strong, and as I told you, maybe like political parties leaders are using this to each other, katılıyorum is not that strong. So, not just um, like serious issues or political issues, but you can use this 
in casual talks as well, like with your friend, like with anything. Um, I think you can say, oh, I think purple looks good on her. You can say, I agree. Yeah, katılıyorum. It doesn't have to be about serious issues. And that was it. I hope you enjoyed today's lesson. And by the way, don't forget to visit our website, turkishclass101.com. Please subscribe to our channel and comment. I would like to hear your ideas. And I hope to see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye. Hi everybody, I'm Selin from TurkishClass101.com. Today we'll talk about how to respond to how are you. Nasılsın? How are you? Okay, first let's start with learning the question. How to ask how are you? It is Nasılsın? Nasılsın? How are you? There are other ways to ask, how are you? Another one is, naber? Naber? It is uh, more casual than nasılsın. There is one more, and it is more polite way to say. Nasılsınız? Nasılsınız? So, there are three ways. Nasılsın? Naber? Nasılsınız? Yasen? And you? Yasen? And you? So, of course, this will be after someone asks you, <laughs> how are you? How are you? I'm fine. And you, right? So, nasılsın? İyiyim, which means I'm fine. And you? Yasen? Or, sen nasılsın? Which means, how are you? And you is yasen. Yasen? You don't even need to say ya. Just say san. Well, it will be casual, of course. But it will mean, it will mean the same thing. San? İyiyim san. Son zamanlarda nasılsın? How have you been recently? Okay, the next one is. Son zamanlarda nasılsın? Son zamanlarda nasılsın? How have you been recently? Mm, I think if somebody asks me, like, how have you been recently? Son zamanlarda nasılsın? Maybe it will sound like maybe they were just worried about me, like, maybe I have bad time. So they're asking me, son zamanlarda nasılsın? Maybe something happened, so that's why they're asking. So it's not like, it's an everyday question. You don't ask everyday, son zamanlarda, son zamanlarda. Maybe something happened and that's why you're asking. How have you been recently? Son zamanlarda nasılsın? İyiyim. I'm fine. İyiyim. I'm fine. İyiyim. I'm fine. So okay, let's make our conversation one more time. Nasılsın? İyiyim. Sen nasılsın? And you can say again. İyiyim. Or ben de iyiyim. I'm fine too. Ben de iyiyim. Fena değilim. I'm not bad. Fena değilim. Fena değilim. I'm not bad. Which means so so. Fena değilim. I'm not good. I'm not bad. Fena değilim. I think we use it very often. Fena değilim. It means like so so. Or you can say idare eder. It is, I think, really casual way to say I'm not bad. So if somebody asks you nasılsın, you can just say idare eder. Like so so. Uykum var. I'm sleepy. Uykum var. I'm sleepy. Uykum var. I'm sleepy. That's that's usual me. If you ask me nasılsın all the time, I will answer you uykum var. Mm, uykum var. Maybe it's not a good 
um, idea to say your manager. Kötü hissediyorum. I'm feeling bad. Kötü hissediyorum. I'm feeling bad. Kötü hissediyorum. It sounds like maybe you're sick, maybe your health is not good, or maybe um, you had some fight with someone. It doesn't have to be physical too, of course. If you say kötü hissediyorum, then somebody will ask you in return, neyin var? You will hear this, I think, I'm sure. Neyin var? The question, it means, oh, why, what happened? Like, what is the problem? Neyin var? İdare ediyorum. I am doing okay. İdare ediyorum. İdare ediyorum. I am doing okay. Do you remember I also said this before in this video? İdare eder. İdare ediyorum. I think it's better way to say. İdare eder is a really casual way. But both same meaning. İdare ediyorum. Which means so so. Not bad. I'm doing okay. İdare eder. İdare ediyorum. Fena değil. Her zamanki gibi. Same as always. Her zamanki gibi. Same as always. Nasılsın? Her zamanki gibiyim. If you say like this, I am same as always. Her zamanki gibiyim. Or you can say like everything is same as always. Her şey her zamanki gibi. Her zamanki gibi devam ediyor. Sorduğun için teşekkürler. Thank you for asking. Sorduğun için teşekkürler. Sorduğun için teşekkürler. Thank you for asking. Well, I think we don't usually think when somebody asks how are you to us. If it's um like everyday conversation, like how are you? I'm fine. Thank you for asking. We don't say. Mm, but sometimes it may sound like actually you're angry to someone. Thank you for asking. Like you were never asking me. So when you say this in Turkish, sorduğun için teşekkürler, with a bit angry tone, then it will be like you're actually not feeling good about that person because that person is never asking you how do you feel or like that kind of thing. It may sound ang angry sometimes. Well, of course, it depends on your voice tone. Sorduğun için teşekkürler, like this. And we finished our lesson. I hope you enjoyed it. So today we learned how to say, uh, how to respond, how are you question. I think it will be very helpful to you because it's um, like very daily conversation. If you want to learn Turkish more, you know what to do. You need to visit turkishclass101.com. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel. I will be waiting for you in the next video. Bye bye, good to do. Hey everyone, welcome to your monthly review. The monthly show on language learning, where you discover new learning strategies, motivational tips, new study tools, resources, and where we show off learners like you speaking the language. That is, if you're brave enough to participate and become language learning famous. All the materials mentioned in this video are available for you right now on our website. Click the link in the description to sign up for your free lifetime account and start speaking in minutes. Okay, today's topic is why your worst days are the best days to study. So, have you ever had a day where you planned on learning language and you just couldn't go through with it? Even if learning a new language is your personal goal? something that you really want? Well, today you're going to learn, one, why these bad days happen, and two, why you'll get your best work done on your worst days. Let's start. Why bad days happen with language learning. When I say bad days, I don't mean when you're too busy or when life gets in the way. These things are unavoidable. I mean days when you're just not in the mood. It's a perfectly good day. The sun is shining. No bad news. 
but you just can't get yourself to study. You're just wasting the day. So here's why they happen. First, it's the law of diminishing returns in action. What does this mean? Think of it as eating pizza every day for five days a week. On the first day, the first two slices are great, but by the third one, you're feeling queasy. It's not as good. And by the fifth day, you're sick of pizza. That's the law of diminishing returns, when the benefits start decreasing over time. And it happens with language learning. When you first start, you learn a lot of phrases and it feels good, you're excited. But as time goes on, you don't feel like you're learning much. And this affects your mood and motivation. So you're not as excited to learn anymore. So you start having bad days. Second, bad days happen because you overthink things and ruin it for yourself. It's like dreading going to the gym. Let's say you went yesterday. You have to go again today. So you're dreading it all day long. Ah, I gotta go again. You set yourself up for a bad mood and a bad day. Third, bad days are a natural part of the cycle. Some days will be good. Most days you'll feel indifferent. Some days will be bad, but that's completely natural and anyone with long-term projects and goals feels the same. And fourth, you can't be on 100% of the time. So just like days can't always be good, you too can't always be on and ready to go all the time. Again, just a realistic and expected part of the journey. Now, let's jump into the second part why you'll get your best work done on your worst days. So, why will you get your best work done? First, it's not that bad once you start. Once you've spent 10 or 15 minutes learning a language, it's not so bad. People say the same thing about the gym. If you show up and put in a bit of time, it gets easier. Second, it's overcoming a mental barrier. What I mean is, when most of us have bad days, our brain automatically says, okay, can't be done today, stop, we're done. But if you just work through it, you don't take these bad days so seriously anymore. And that means you're more likely to stick with your language learning goal. This brings us to the next point. Third, it's your best work because working on a bad day only strengthens your habit of language learning. Remember, habits are what will help you master a language over time. If you can stick to a habit on a bad day, your habit only gets stronger and it will lead you to fluency. And finally, fourth, it just feels good to overcome something. Imagine you have a bad day, but you still put in 10 minutes of language learning. It's a real sense of achievement. And it doesn't matter if you do a 10 minute lesson or a five minute lesson. The fact that you made some progress on a bad day will give you the motivation you need to keep going. Now, speaking of lessons, here are this month's new lessons and resources. First, the best of 2018 language learning cheat sheets. If you want to get access to all of our conversation cheat sheets that we sent out this year, here's your chance. Download this PDF bundle right now. Next, the brand new supermarket cheat sheet. With this cheat sheet, you'll learn must know shopping phrases and vocab for meats, vegetables, and all products that you'll find in a supermarket. And finally, the most common adjectives. If you're a beginner and don't yet know these adjectives, then this is a perfect chance to boost your vocabulary. This one minute lesson will get them stuck in your head, guaranteed. To get these free lessons and resources, just click the link in the description below. All right, everyone. Now we're asking you to submit a video or audio file of yourself speaking the language. If you do, you'll win three free months of access to our learning program, which includes your very own teacher. Here's the challenge for you. Yes, everyone watching this. Record a 30 second to one minute video or audio clip. Introduce yourself in the language. Share your name, where you're from, and why you're studying this language. And you'll win a three month Premium Plus subscription. To submit, click on the link in the description. Sign up for your free lifetime account. Then fill out the form, attach the audio or video file, and press submit. We may feature you in next month's episode. So a lot of learners will see you and your progress and will hopefully get inspired to improve and master the language. To submit a recording, click the link in the description and follow the instructions on the page. So thank you for watching this episode of Monthly Review. Next time, we'll talk about how to set achievable language learning goals and resolutions. In the meantime, submit your recording if you're brave. Like and share this video and leave a comment to tell us what language learning tactics you'd like us to talk about. See you next time. Bye.
Hello everyone, I'm Selin from TurkishClass101.com. Herkese tekrardan merhaba. Today we're gonna talk about 10 foods that will kill you faster. The first one is kızartma, fried food. Uzmanlar çok sık kızartma yemek konusunda uyarıyor. Experts warn about eating fried food too often. Turkish people really like to eat fried food so much, especially fried eggplant. We say patlıcan kızartması. Eggplant, it's a fried eggplant. Chips. Chips. Film izlerken yemek için büyük boy chips aldım. I've bought a large bag of chips to eat while watching a movie. So Turkish people usually eat chips while watching movie. Yes, we eat chips, but there is one more thing we eat a lot, and it is popcorn, and we say patlamış mısır in Turkish. Patlamış mısır means popcorn. Kırmızı et. Red meat. Doktorum bana kırmızı eti yasakladı. My doctor has forbidden me red meat. Um, I think um, if a doctor forbids a Turkish person to eat red meat, then it is very, very hard for him or her. Because uh, in Turkish cuisine, many of our, uh, I mean, meal has a red meat. We really like red meat in Turkey. The next one is gazlı içecekler. Fizzy drinks. Çocukların bu kadar çok gazlı içecek tüketmesi doğru değil. It's not right for children to consume this many fizzy drinks. In Turkey, most people consume, I think, cola. Coca-Cola, it's like the number one fizzy drink that Turkish people drink. Beyaz ekmek. White bread. Kahvaltıda tereyağlı beyaz ekmek yemekten vazgeçmem. I cannot give up eating white bread with butter for breakfast. Um, I think Turkish people, they eat white, white bread not only for breakfast, for lunch, for dinner. We love uh, white bread very much. We can eat with any meal, like together. Sosis. Sausage. Hot dog sosisle yapılan bir çeşit sandviçtir. A hot dog is a kind of sandwich made with sausage. Um, in Turkey, um, the sausage, uh, because we do not eat pig, it is usually um, the cow. But I think in foreign countries, it is usually pork or pig, I think. I think there is a difference. Hamur işi. Pastry. Hamur işi yemeği azalttığımdan beri 3 kilo verdim. I have lost 3 kilograms since I have cut down eating pastries. Well, if you are going to Turkey or if you are interested in Turkey, then the pastry is a word that you hear a lot. Because we love pastry. Um, in Turkish cuisine, there are so many different pastries. And usually they are very sweet. And it's a, I'm not sure if it's a nice thing to hear, but according to um, World Health Organization, the diabetes, the disease, is the number one cause of that in Turkey. <laughs> I think it's all because of the pastries. Krema. Cream. Diyette olduğum için kahvemi kremasız alacağım. I'll have my coffee without cream because I'm on a diet. In Turkey, we drink Turkish coffee, and originally Turkish coffee doesn't have any cream in it, but we put sugar. So if you're like on a diet, if you're doing diet, then you can ask that um, you can ask the other person to not put sugar on your um, Turkish coffee. Dondurulmuş gıda, frozen food. Bu süpermarketin dondurulmuş gıda rayonu nerede? Where is the frozen food section of the supermarket? Um, again, I think frozen food, it's not very common in Turkey. I mean, I'm sure there are many people are eating, but um, I don't think it's very common. No. They prefer to eat at home, I think. They, they prefer cooking and eating. Um, so that is why they don't usually buy outside, like frozen food. Patates kızartması. French fries. Hamburgerinizin yanında patates kızartması ister misiniz? Would you like some french fries with your burger? I think Turkish people like french fries very much because we like burger and we like um, fast food, unfortunately, like burger, pizza. So french fries is, yeah, definitely many people consume it, I can say that.
Okay, that's all for today. I hope you learned a lot about um, the things that will kill you faster. And I hope you don't do that. So in this list, my favorite is unfortunately French fries. So which one is your favorite? If you want to watch more Turkish videos, then please subscribe our channel. And if you want to learn Turkish more, then please don't forget to visit our website, turkishclass101.com. I hope to see you guys in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye. Görüşürüz. Want to speed up your language learning? Get access to all of our best PDF cheat sheets for free. Just click the link in the description and sign up for your free lifetime account right now. Must know family words in Turkish. Okay, let's start. Aile, family. Aile, family. Aile, toplumun temelidir. Family is the basis of society. If you want to talk about your family, then you say benim ailem, senin ailen. Benim ailem dört kişiliktir, which means there are four people in my family. Baba, father, baba, father. Babam hep televizyonun önünde uyuya kalıyor. Babam hep Televizyonun önünde uyuya kalıyor. My father always falls asleep in front of the TV. So in Turkey, like usually like small, like little girls, um, they tend to say to their father, like daddy, like that kind of like cute way. So baba becomes like babish, babishko. It's like daddy, like this kind of word. Koca. Husband. Koca. Husband. Kocam beni aldatıyor. My husband cheats on me.
Oh, it's not a very nice example actually. But you don't need to use koja actually all the time. You can use esh. Esh means my husband or my wife. It can be used for both. Benim eşim, my wife or my husband. But koja is only for guys. So only women can use it. My husband, kocam. Kocam, eşim. Oğul, san. Oğul, san. İki oğlum var. İki oğlum var. I have two sons. Let's say you have two sons. If you want to say my elder son's name is blah blah, elder son is like büyük oğlum. My elder son, büyük oğlum. If you want to say my youngest son, you say küçük oğlum. Büyük oğlum, küçük oğlum. Amca, uncle. Amca, uncle. Amcam bize çikolata getirmiş. Uncle has brought chocolate for us. So I know in English, um, for your mother's brother and for your father's brother, you use only one word, uncle, right? But in Turkish, we don't use the same word for both. We have different words. Amca is for your father's brother. But for your mother's brother, you say dayı. Dayı amca. But you don't have this in English. So I think it's only for Turkish. Dayı amca. Dede. Grandfather. Dede. Grandfather. Dedemin gözleri iyi görmüyor. My grandfather's eyesight is not good. We have two words for grandfather. One is dede and the other one is büyük baba. And büyük baba literally means grandfather. If you ask me the difference, I think dede is more mm, like casual. Büyük baba, it's a bit more polite. But it's actually really hard to say the difference. Maybe most Turkish people prefer dede, I think. Dede is more like, I don't know, it sounds more like Turkish culture. Kayın pedash, father-in-law. Kayın pedash, father-in-law. Sizi kayın pederimle tanıştırayım. Mehmet Bey. <laughs> Mehmet Bey. Let me introduce you to my father-in-law, Mehmet Bey. So, in Turkey, to your father-in-law, you don't need to be polite, I think. Of course you need to be polite, but you say father to your father-in-law too. So, you don't say Mr. Mehmet. Bey means Mr. You say Baba, like Baba, benim babam, like same. But of course, when you're introducing your father-in-law to someone else, you say Mr. Mehmet. But when you call your father-in-law, you just say father in Turkish, baba. Anne, mother. Anne, mother. Annem henüz işten dönmedi. My mother hasn't returned back from work yet. Anne is such a nice word, right? My Best, best word, maybe. So, anne, just like baba, when your like little daughter or son would like to say it in a cute way, they change it and they make it anniş, annişko, annecim, which all means like mommy, mama, like this. And also, there is one more way to say mother in Turkish, and it is ana, a n a. Well, usually, not in the big cities, but in the villages, like towns. I think people still using ana, but like cities, like Istanbul or Ankara, probably not most people are using ana anymore. It's more like in rural areas now. Kız, daughter. Kız, daughter. Hep bir kızım olsun istedim. I always wanted to have a daughter. Okay, so now we know how to say son and daughter, right? Son is oğul. 
and daughter is kız. There are also another way to say, which is not very common in daily language, but you say like this. For son, erkek evlat. For daughter, kız evlat. Which means like the same meaning, son, daughter. And kız also, it means girl actually, right? So girl is also kız, daughter is also kız. Like we use the same word. Kırı, wife. Kırı, wife. Karım beni terk etti. My wife has left me. Well, if you cheat on your wife, then of course she will leave you like that. So if you use karı, the noun, just like that, I think it will sound rude. Because we use it as an insult in Turkey sometimes. Depends on the conversation. So please be careful about that. If you think it's too rude to say karı, then uh, do you remember I just taught, like, taught you another word, eş. You can just go with eş, eşim. It will be safer, I think. So, karım, my wife. Eşim, my wife. Same. You can just choose whatever. Ten sad words. It's a bit sad topic, but it's also important to know the sad words as well, right? So, let's start. The first word is Canı sıkkın. Upset. Bugün biraz canı sıkkın. Bugün biraz canı sıkkın. He is a little bit upset today. So, if you see your friend a bit upset, then first you need to ask the question in Turkish, right? So you can ask, ne oldu? Ne oldu is like, what happened? And then your friend can say, mm, today I am a bit upset. So he or she will say, Bugün biraz canım sıkkın. I said canım because I'm talking about myself. In that case, it's going to be canım sıkkın. The next one is, göz yaşı. Tear. Konuşurken göz yaşlarımı tutamadım. Konuşurken Göz yaşlarımı tutamadım. I couldn't hold my tears while speaking. So there is a very common Turkish saying. Now I'm going to share this with you. It includes tears in it. So it goes like this. Göz yaşlarım sel oldu. Or göz yaşları sel oldu. Well, it means literally the Eye drops or tears were floating. So it means we cry so much or I cry so much that it became like a flood. And I'm sure I, you can hear it a lot in Turkey, especially in very sad situations like funeral or if something bad happens to you, then people use this expression a lot. Göz yaşları sel oldu. Yalnız. Lonely. Kendimi yalnız hissediyorum. Kendimi yalnız hissediyorum. I feel lonely. So this word, actually many Turkish people are also using wrong sometimes. And we also have to be careful. So the word is yalnız, which means first we have L and then N. But in Turkey, most people are confusing about this word. They are saying yalnız, but it's wrong. So be careful about that. It's yalnız. Yalnız hissediyorum. Or if you want to say I am alone, not I feel alone, then you can say yalnızım. Ben yalnızım. I'm alone. So you can use this word without feeling. For example, if you want to say I am alone or I am lonely, we only have one sentence for both and it is ben yalnızım. Ben, which means I am, yalnızım, alone or lonely. Sefil, miserable. Ne kadar sefil bir yaratık. Ne kadar sefil bir yaratık. 
What a miserable creature! <laughs> Actually, it sounds really funny for me because we don't usually use this in daily life, you know? You don't use it with your friends. Um, you use this for someone you really don't like, I think. Ne kadar sefil bir yaratık. It's like, wow, it's really offensive. <laughs> so, um, please be careful when you are using this example. <laughs> I don't want to trouble you. Sefil also means, in Turkish, kind of like, we use it for poor people. It means like you're poor or in a poor situation. That time you can say, oh, that, that person is really sefil, which means very poor. You can say, uh, çok sefil bir insan. İnsan means human, person. Çok sefil bir insan. So we, we will understand that the person is really poor or in a really poor situation. Üzgün. Sad. Üzgün görünüyorsun. Üzgün görünüyorsun. You look sad. <laughs> I'm saying this while I'm smiling. Sad, yeah, it's um, actually the topic of this lesson, right? So if you want to learn sad words, first you need to say how to say sad. We say üzgün. If you want to say I am sad, üzgünüm. Or if you want to ask a friend, are you sad? Üzgün müsün? You look sad. Üzgün görünüyorsun. Or if you say I'm sad in Turkish, çok üzgünüm. Sometimes it means I'm sorry. Or I'm very sorry, like you're apologizing. Ah, çok üzgünüm. Hata yaptım. I made a mistake. So üzgün actually depends on the situation. Has two meanings. Ağlamak. To cry. Hüzünlü filmler beni hep ağlatır. Hüzünlü filmler beni hep Ağlatır. Sad movies always make me cry. So when you see a Turkish friend crying, and if you want to say, oh, my friend, don't cry, do you know how to say? You go like this. Ah, arkadaşım, my friend, don't cry. Ağlama. Ağlama means, don't cry. Ağlama. Cesareti kırılmış. Discouraged. Ağır eleştiriler yüzünden cesareti kırılmış. Ağır eleştiriler yüzünden cesareti kırılmış. He is discouraged because of harsh criticism. So discouraged, yeah, it's a bit long word compared to others, right? Cesareti kırılmak. So in Turkish, discouraged, cesareti kırılmış, can be used as a verb or adjective. If you want to say a discouraged man or a discouraged person, you say cesareti kırılmış bir insan. Cesareti kırılmış kişi, which means discouraged person. But if you want to say he is discouraged, onun Cesareti kırılmış, just like in our example. Hayal kırıklığına uğramak. To be disappointed. Bazı Narnia günlükleri hayranları ilk kez lokumun tadına baktıklarında hayal kırıklığına uğruyorlar. Bazı Narnia günlükleri hayranları ilk kez Lokumun tadına baktıklarında hayal kırıklığına uğruyorlar. Some chronicles of Narnia fans get disappointed when they first taste Turkish delight. Who? <laughs> who are they? Why are you disappointed? Uh, for people who don't know, let me explain. In the Chronicles of Narnia, there's a scene, the little boy, uh, were tasting Turkish delight. I'm not sure about the character's name because um, I'm not such a big fan of it, but there is a, like, a bad character, a lady character, and she was trying to trick 
the little guy by giving him Turkish delight, like, come with me, come with me, I will give you Turkish delight. And he was a fan of Turkish delight, so he went with the lady. So that is why I think many uh, people know about Turkish delight. But why are you disappointed? <laughs> because it's a bit sweet, like very sweet taste. Maybe that's why you're disappointed. It's very delicious though, yeah. So I'm going to say to you, please don't be disappointed or please don't get disappointed in Turkish, okay? Lütfen hayal kırıklığına uğramayın. I said, lütfen, please, hayal kırıklığına uğramayın. Please, don't get disappointed. <laughs> Mutsuz. Unhappy. Neden mutsuzsun? Neden mutsuzsun? Why are you unhappy? So, neden means why. It's a very basic question, right? And mutsuz means unhappy. So, the basically, the core, the root of the word is mut. So from mut, we say mutlu and mutsuz. Mutsuz means unhappy, mutlu means happy. Uh, I'm not sure the exact meaning of the root of this word, but I think it's something related to your feeling. Like the feeling you have is whether happy or unhappy. Kalbi kırılmak, to be heartbroken. Kalbim kırıldı. Kalbim kırıldı. I am heartbroken. So, kalb means heart. But when we want to say heartbroken, we say kalbim. So, can you see a difference here? The word is actually ends with P, right? Kalb. But then, because of Turkish grammar uh, rules, when you want to say kalbim, then P becomes B. So we actually, because this is a, like a Turkish grammar rule, we say, we don't say kalpim, we say kalbim kırıldı. Kırılmak means to break or broken. So kalbim kırıldı. When are we using this thing? When you break up, <laughs> uh, when you do something nice but you cannot see anything nice in return. <laughs> Or when you hear some bad words about yourself. Yeah, like this, right? Kalbim kırıldı. Want to speed up your language learning? Get access to all of our best PDF cheat sheets for free. Just click the link in the description and sign up for your free lifetime account right now. Top 10 travel phrases you should know. So let's start. Bir harita alabilir miyim? Could I get a map? The first sentence is Bir harita alabilir miyim? Bir harita alabilir miyim? Could I get a map? But what kind of map, right? You need to say that. Like Turkey map or what? So you can say Bir Türkiye haritası alabilir miyim? Or let's say you're visiting Antalya, my home. You can say Bir Antalya haritası alabilir miyim? Let's say you don't even have to use bir. So the sentence will be like, Antalya haritası alabilir miyim? Can I get an Antalya map? İngilizce biliyor musunuz? Do you speak English? İngilizce biliyor musunuz? İngilizce biliyor musunuz? Do you speak English? Uh, I don't want to disappoint you, but probably <laughs> the answer will be no. <laughs> Many Turkish people, they learn English at school and they are very friendly with foreigner people. They want to help, they want to talk, but I'm not sure if we can speak really good English. So you can, you can also ask them, İngilizce konuşabiliyor musunuz? Which means, can you speak English? Or just say, İngilizce... <laughs> then they will understand and they will say probably yes or no. Evet, hayır. Havalimanından şehre otobüs var mı? Is there a bus from the airport to the city? Havalimanından 
şehre otobüs var mı? Havalimanından şehre otobüs var mı? Is there a bus from the airport to the city? So probably they will start to explain and they will say you, yeah, we have bus. Evet, otobüs var. You need to cross the street or you need to go right. Şuraya git, karşıya geç. And then, please take the bus over there. T15, they will say. Evet, şu otobüse bin. T15, E30. Probably you will hear this kind of numbers. Wi-Fi ücretsiz mi? Isn't Wi-Fi free? Wi-Fi ücretsiz mi? Wi-Fi ücretsiz mi? Is the Wi-Fi free? The correct pronunciation of Wi-Fi in Turkish is actually just like English, Wi-Fi. So, if somebody says Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi or something else to you, it's actually wrong. Wi-Fi ücretsiz mi? Mm, usually, yes. We have free Wi-Fi in cafes. In the airport, actually, if you just go to any cafe or restaurant, usually the Wi-Fi is free. Bu gece için boş odanız var mı? Do you have any vacancies tonight? Bu gece için boş odanız var mı? Bu gece için boş odanız var mı? Do you have any vacancies tonight? Okay, so now you leave the airport, I guess. You went to a hotel, probably. And then, yes, you're asking in the reception desk, do you have any vacancies tonight? So you say, bu gece için boş odanız var mı? Or you can just say, boş odanız var mı? If you, if you think this sentence is kind of long, then probably they will understand. Boş odanız var mı? They will understand that you want to stay there. If you want to stay in a like specific time period, like from this day to this day, then of course you need to explain it. If you just say, boş odanız var mı? They will probably think only for tonight, just for one night. If you want to say like from this day to this day, before boş odanız, say the time. So like 15 Mayıs'tan 20 Mayıs'a boş odanız var mı? From May 15 to May 20, do you have any vacancies? Başka bir odaya geçebilir miyim? Could I move to a different room? Başka bir odaya geçebilir miyim? Başka bir odaya geçebilir miyim? Could I move to a different room? Başka bir odaya geçebilir miyim? So probably your neighbors are kind of noisy. And that's why you want to change your room, right? You can say Başka bir odaya geçmek istiyorum. Which means I want to move to another room. Rezervasyonum var. I have a reservation. Rezervasyonum var. I have a reservation. You can just go to the front desk. I have a reservation here. <laughs> Rezervasyonum var. So probably first they will ask you, do you have a reservation, right? So the question will be, rezervasyonunuz var mı? Rezervasyonunuz var mı? They will be using rezervasyonunuz because they will be probably speaking the polite way. And then in return, you can respond, yes, I have. Evet, rezervasyonum var. But if you don't have, hayır, no, I don't have reservation. Rezervasyonum yok. Please don't forget to say uh, rezervasyonum. If you just say rezervasyon, just the word. Then I think it will not sound natural. Most foreign people they do this mistake. They are forgetting the U N M at the end. Reservasyon they say, but it will not be natural. So reservasyonum var or reservasyonum yok. Menu alabilir miyiz lütfen? Could we have the menu, please? Menu alabilir miyiz lütfen? Menu alabilir miyiz lütfen? Could we have the menu, please? As you saw, I just did that. So usually when we talk with the waiter or waitress in Turkey, we say like, hey, <laughs> hey, can we get a menu? I think this is how we usually do. Menu alabilir miyiz lütfen? 
But if you think this is too long, then just say menu lütfen, menu lütfen, which means menu please. Then they will just bring the menu to you. Öneriniz var mı? Do you have any recommendations? Öneriniz var mı? Öneriniz var mı? Do you have any recommendations? Let's say you went to a tourist office, like a company's office, and you want to join a tour. Then, when you're talking with the staff, you can ask, hmm, öneriniz var mı? Or you can say, benim için öneriniz var mı? Do you have any recommendations for me? Benim için öneriniz var mı? And then, they can just give you, like, all options they have. Hesabı alabilir miyim? Could I have the check? Hesabı alabilir miyim? Hesabı alabilir miyim? Could I have the check? Usually, again, <laughs> in Turkey, we say, Hesap lütfen. Just like menu. Hesap lütfen. Garson, hesap lütfen. Which means, you're, you're calling the waiter or waitress. Check please. Check please. Hesap lütfen. This sentence is okay. But it's a polite way to say. So usually, all people in Turkey, when they speak, like, casually, when it's like, how should I say, when they went to a cafe with their friends, they just say, hesap lütfen, and it will be the same meaning with the sentence. 10 must know vocabulary for the restaurant. Garson. Garson. Waiter, waitress. The first one is garson, waiter or waitress. Bu restoranın garsonları çok nazik. Bu restoranın garsonları çok nazik. The waiters in this restaurant are very kind. So in Turkish, we don't have two different words. For waiter or waitress, we just say garson, so the name of the job. If you want to call a boy or girl, I mean the waiter or waitress, you can just say garson. And in Turkish, we call like this, usually. Pardon, bakar mısınız? Garson bey, bakar mısınız? It's like, hello, excuse me. Can you look at me? Like that. Yemek. Ye Mek, to eat. The next one is, yemek, to eat. Kırmızı et yemiyorum. Kırmızı et yemiyorum. I don't eat red meat. So it's a very basic word, but it's important to know if you're going to a Turkish restaurant. What if you have an allergy, right? Or what if you're a vegetarian? then you need to know the eat, to eat word. So you can say you don't eat or you have allergy. Kırmızı et yemiyorum. Or let's say you don't eat egg. Egg is yumurta. Yumurta yemiyorum. If you want to say I am vegetarian in Turkish, you can say like this. Ben vejetaryenim. Ben vejetaryenim. Kırmızı et yemiyorum. I don't eat red meat. Sipariş vermek. Sipariş vermek. To order. Sipariş vermek. To order. Pasta sipariş ettim. Pasta sipariş ettim. I ordered a cake. Um, it's very funny actually because I know in English pasta means like macaroni, right? But in Turkish it means cake. So it was always very confusing for me when I was learning English. We are using for describing cake or like a, some kind of sweet, like birthday cake. We are saying pasta. And sipariş etmek means order. You can use it with other foods too. Uh, usually, people are ordering pizza to their home, right? 
you can say pizza sipariş ettim. Or if you want to ask your friend, should we order pizza? Then you can say pizza sipariş edelim mi? Pizza sipariş edelim mi? Su. Su. Water. Su. Water. Bir bardak soğuk su alabilir miyim? Bir bardak soğuk su alabilir miyim? Can I have a glass of cold water? Usually in Turkish restaurants, the water is not free. So you have to pay money for it. And please be careful if you're ordering water because you may thought maybe in your country it's free, but it's not free in Turkey. But in Turkey, in most restaurants, not all of them, in most restaurants, the Turkish tea is free, black tea is free. And it usually comes after your meal. They just bring you or they ask you, should we bring black tea? Should we bring uh, Turkish tea for you? And it's usually free, but I'm not saying for all of them, but most of them. Tatlı. Tatlı. Dessert. Tatlı. Dessert. Bu tatlının yanında bir fincan kahve iyi gider. Bu tatlının yanında bir fincan kahve İyi gider. A cup of coffee would be great with this dessert. Usually in Turkey, you know, people like to drink Turkish coffee. And with Turkish coffee, we usually eat rather Turkish delight. Or recently, we started to eat chocolate. Like Turkish brand chocolate or any other brand. So in Turkish, we say like this. Türk Kahvesinin yanında lokum iyi gider. I said, Turkish delight goes well with Turkish coffee. Chef, chef, chief, chef, chief. Bu restoranın şefi çok yetenekli. Bu restoranın şefi çok yetenekli. This restaurant's chief is very talented. Okay, you finished your meal in a Turkish restaurant and you really liked it. Now you want to say good words. You want to give good feedback to the restaurant. Then you can use the sentence, right? It's a good sentence to know, I think. Bu restoranın şefi çok yetenekli. Yemekler çok lezzetliydi. It means the food was very delicious. Yemekler çok lezzetliydi. Fast food. Fast food. Fast food. Fast food. Fast food. Çocuklarımın fast food yemesine izin vermem. Çocuklarımın fast food yemesi ne izin vermem. I don't let my children eat fast food. We are using the English word as it is, fast food. But our pronunciation is not like English, of course. It's a bit different. It's like fast food. But we have actually other Turkish words. It is rather abur cubur. It's like, it's more like snacks, I think. Abur cubur or Hazır yiyecekler, which means instant food. Hazır yiyecekler. We are using these two for describing fast food sometimes. Abur cubur, hazır yiyecekler, or fast food as it is. It's also okay. Restaurant. Restoran. Restaurant. Restaurant. Restaurant. Bu sokaktaki ev yemekleri restoranına Sık sık giderim. Bu sokaktaki ev yemekleri rest 
to ra n na sık sık gi de rim. I go to the home style food restaurant on the street very often. I go to the home style food restaurant on the street very often. In Turkish, we have this type of restaurant because most people, especially people who live alone, they are missing their mother's food so much, right? So that is why there are so many home style food restaurants all over Turkey. They are cooking like foods like that reminds you your mother food. Very home cooked turkish meals not like kebab maybe not like turkish pizza really like turkish food hesap he sap check hesap check hesap lütfen he sap lütfen check please do you know how to uh describe the waiter that you want check without saying any word. <laughs> so we are using our body language in this case to tell the waiter that we want to pay the check. And it's like this. Now I'm going to show you. Hesap <laughs> lütfen. Like this. <laughs> Lezzetli. Lezzetli. Delicious. Lezzetli. Delicious. Çok lezzetli görünüyor. Çok lezzetli görünüyor. It looks very delicious. Now your meal is here. It's still hot. And it looks really awesome. Then that time you will say, Ah, oh, çok lezzetli görünüyor. Mm, I want to eat it. Want to speed up your language learning? Get access to all of our best PDF cheat sheets for free. Just click the link in the description and sign up for your free lifetime account right now. And must know math words. The first word is matematik, math. İlkokulda en sevdiğim ders matematikti. İlk o kulda en sev Diyim ders ma te ma tik ti. Math was my favorite lesson in elementary school. Math was not my <laughs> favorite subject in elementary school. Well, uh, in Turkey, um, students start to learn math from the first grade, like with basic math, of course, like um plus minus but we will come to those words later uh, but after that in high school we don't just have math we are dividing classes as geometry analytics and then math and we say in turkish geometri analytik and matematik the next one is sayı number Sayılarla aram pek iyi değildir. Sayılarla aram pek iyi değildir. I'm not very good with numbers. Uh, if you're not good with numbers, then you're not good at math. I'm sorry. <laughs> In math, we are grouping numbers, right? So, for example, how do you say Prime numbers in Turkish. Asal, sayılar. Sayılar is numbers. And asal is prime. So prime numbers. Asal, sayılar. What are prime numbers? Do you know? <laughs> buçuk. Health. Bir buçuk yıldır bu şehirde yaşıyorum. Bir buçuk yıldır bu şey Hir de ya şı yo rum. I have been living in the city for a year and a half. So as you can see, buçuk is not just a math word. You can use it in your daily life as well. Like, how old are you? Sometimes you're asking someone, right? And they can say, 
ten and a half. So in Turkish, it's like on buçuk or fifteen and a half. On beş buçuk. Buçuk comes after. So if you want to say half of an apple, then it's not buçuk. It's another word. It's elmanın. Elma is apple. Yarısı. Yarısı means half of the apple. Elmanın yarısı. Or, let's say orange. Portakalın yarısı. It's not buçuk. Çift. Even. Çift sayılar ikiye kalansız bölünür. Çift sayılar i ki ye kalansız bölünür. Even numbers can be divided by two without a reminder. So çift itself has many meanings. So if you use with çift sayı, then it becomes even number. Be careful about that because çift can be also mean couple like a uh, man and woman. So you have to use it with sayı so then we can understand you're talking about even numbers. So what are even numbers? Do you know? Can you count in Turkish the even numbers? Let me start for you then you can continue. Sıfır, iki, dört, altı, sekiz, on. So now it's your turn. Tek. Al. İki tek sayının toplamı bir çift sayı eder. İki tek sayının toplamı bir çift sayı eder. The sum of two odd numbers is an even number. Why don't we try it? Okay, in Turkish. So let's first find two odd numbers. İki tek sayı. I'll go with üç ve beş. Üç is three, five is beş. Üç artı beş. Three plus five equals to eşittir. Sekiz. Eight. Üç artı beş. Eşitti sekiz. Three plus five equals to eight. And eight is an even number, so it's correct. <gülüyor> artı plus. Sen daha iki artı ikiye hesaplayamıyorsun. Sen daha iki artı ikiye hesap. L ya mı yor sun. You can't even calculate two plus two. <laughs> so it's kind of angry sentence. Uh, you can say it to your friend when you are studying math. You can't even calculate two plus two. İki artı iki means two plus two. Calculate. Show your friend. You can calculate. It equals to four, right? And four means dirt in Turkish. Say it's dirt. <gülüyor> eksi. Minus. 26 eksi 9 17 eder. 26 eksi 9 17 eder. 26 minus 9 is 17. Hmm, <gülüyor> you're good at math. So the minus we are also using for temperature, like if it's below zero, for minus one, minus two, we are saying eksi bir, eksi iki. So for temperature, the weather, we are also using it. And for math, as a, like for calculating, we are also using minus, eksi. So I'm going to say in Turkish, a calculation for you, and write me the answers only in Turkish, okay? Okay, here it goes. 98 eksi 
27. Kaç eder? I'm not going to say English. <gülüyor> kere. Times. 7 kere 8 kaç eder? 7 kere 8 kaç eder? What is 7 times 8? Okay, I think they want me to answer this question probably here. Uh, 17 times 8. So I will say in Turkish again. 7 kere 8 56 eder. 7 times 8 is 56. I'm going to teach you one more saying in Turkish. Multiplication table. So multiplication is çarpma. Çarpma in Turkish. And table is tablo. So çarpma tablosu. Multiplication table. Çarpma tablosu. Bölmek. To divide. Büyük sayıları bölmek zor geliyor. Büyük sayıları bölmek zor geliyor. I find it troublesome to divide big numbers. So here's an example. <laughs> First in Turkish. Yüz bölü beş kaç eder? I said, what is 100 divided by 5? So in Turkish, it is 20, which is 20 in English. Yüzde, percent. İkinci alımda yüzde elli indirim yapıyoruz. İ, kin, C A lım da yüzde elli in de rim ya pı yo rus. We give a fifty percent discount for the second purchase. So, as you can hear, in Turkish, we say first percent and then the number. Not like English, because English first you say the number and the percent, right? So it's like 50%. But in Turkish, yüzde elli. So percent and then 50. That is why when we write, first we write the percent symbol and then the number. So it's like uh, different than English. 10 phrases you use when you are angry. Let's be angry today. Bu seni ilgilendirmez. It's none of your business. Bu seni ilgilendirmez. Bu seni ilgilendirmez. It's none of your business. Wow, okay, slow down. <laughs> Sometimes we put hiç also before ilgilendirmez. Um, it's to emphasize the meaning. Like, bu seni hiç ilgilendirmez, which means it's really none of your business. So, both are fine. Just as I told you, hiç gives a more strong meaning. Bu seni hiç ilgilendirmez. Or, I'm going to give you another examples. Actually, I feel really bad to teach you <laughs> these words, though, but it is sana ne? Sana ne means it's not your business. It's like, it's not your job. It's not your thing. Sana ne? Kapa çeneni. Shut up. Kapa çeneni. Kapa çeneni. Shut up. It's, it makes it weirder when I say it slowly. Kapa çeneni. <laughs> Kapa çeneni, I think, this is used in many languages, right? English, Japanese, Turkish. So I think when you don't want to hear what the other person says, you just say, oh, just shut up. Kapa çeneni. Or you can say, biraz susar mısın? It means, can you be just quiet? Can you just shut up? 
It's like susar mısın means can you be quiet, can you shut up? Beni rahat bırak. Leave me alone. Beni rahat bırak. Beni rahat bırak. Leave me alone. This is very common in Turkey. Sometimes you can see some people or some teenagers using this phrase to their parents. Just leave me alone like that. Beni rahat bırak or beni rahat bırakın. If you're talking to more than one person, if you're talking to your parents, for example, you say beni rahat bırakın. So they. Or you can say if you are fighting with your lover, peşimden gelme means don't follow me, leave me alone. Peşimden gelme. Benimle dalga mı geçiyorsun? Are you kidding me? Benimle dalga mı geçiyorsun? Benimle dalga mı geçiyorsun? Are you kidding me? <gülüyor> it's um it's angry. Yes. Benimle dalga mı geçiyorsun? Or let me teach you another one. Şaka yapıyorsun. Means are you kidding? Like I cannot believe. This is also common and it's not always angry. If you are also like if you're surprised, if you really cannot believe, you can also use this like you're kidding. Şaka yapıyorsun. Or you you may sound a bit angry too like şaka yapıyorsun. Like it cannot be true. Her neyse. Whatever. Her neyse. Her neyse. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. Her neyse. It sounds angry, yes. But you can use it without hash. So, neyse means you don't care. Like, you fight or you hear something you didn't like and then you can say, ah, oh, whatever, neyse, like, I don't care. Kes şunu. Cut it out. Kes şunu. Kes şunu. Cut it out. Hmm, if somebody is doing something you don't like and if you want them to stop, yes, you're using this phrase, cut it out. Kes şunu. Or, um, if you don't want that person to continue that action, you can just say the name of the action in Turkey too. So, what I mean is this. Like, stop talking. If you want to say someone to stop talking, kes konuşmayı, which means stop talking, like cut the talking, basically. The, literally, it means that. So, let's have the kes, the first uh, word from this phrase and let's change the verb if you don't want the other person to eat kes yemeyi if you don't want them to talk kes konuşmayı or if you don't want them to look somewhere kes bakmayı seninle konuşmak istemiyorum i don't want to talk to you seninle konuşmak istemiyorum seninle Konuşmak istemiyorum. I don't want to talk to you. Seninle konuşmak istemiyorum. And do you know? You know, I'm saying the words slowly for you, right? In Turkey, if you want to increase the, how should I say, the meaning of the word, you can say slowly. <laughs> It sounds more angry. Did you know that? Like, seninle konuşmak istemiyorum. <laughs> we do that in Turkey. It to you know to give a more strong meaning. Like istemiyorum. It's a bit, little bit like with a melody, a kind of like rhythm. But to how should I say? To if you want to look more angry, and if you want other person to understand clearly. Then you can just divide it to the vowels and you can say it slowly. Sinirliyim. I'm upset. Sinirliyim. Sinirliyim. I'm upset. 
So when you can use it? If somebody is asking you, oh, are you okay? Or you, you fought and then the fight is over. <laughs> Not fight, the argument, argument is over. And the other person is asking you, are you still mad at me? And you can say, evet, sinirliyim. Or you can say, I'm upset because of you, or I'm upset to you. You can say, evet, hala, still, sana sinirliyim. Like, to you, sana sinirliyim. Or, him or her, ona. Evet, hala, ona, sinirliyim. Ne olmuş yani? So what? Ne olmuş yani? Ne olmuş yani? So what? <laughs> so what? Mm, yeah, it's um, it sounds angry, but do you know the yani word at the end? It's not always like for angry phrases. We use it a lot in our daily conversation. And I think, as far as I know, it's just uh, not for the Turkish language. I think in Arabic language they also use yani. You can use it for everything. When you're giving an example, when you are angry, when you are sad, it's very useful, yani. Yani, how should I say yani, like that. Ne olmuş yani? But when you put yani after ne olmuş, then it sounds like you don't care. Like, I don't care, whatever. Ne olmuş yani? Like that. Sen kim olduğunu sanıyorsun? Who do you think you are? Sen kim olduğunu sanıyorsun? Sen kim olduğunu sa Yorsun. Who do you think you are? In Turkey, in fights or arguments, we always use one phrase and it is who are you? Yeah, maybe it doesn't have any meaning in English. When I translate it, maybe you don't know like, so what is angry about that? But somehow in Turkish or in Turkey, we are, when we are angry, we are always asking the other person, who are you? <laughs> Sen kimsin? Really, this is the, literally what it means. Sen kimsin? Who? It's like kimsin. And sen is you. Sen kimsin? Sen kimsin ya? Like that. I don't know why, but Turkish people tend to ask the other person, who are you, when they get angry. And we also don't know why we are doing that, why we are just keep asking the other person who they are, who they are, who they are. I think it's to give the effect the other person, we are not scared of you no matter who you are. Like no matter uh, if you have a good job, if you're a, like a high level person, like who are you? I'm not scared of you. I think to give that effect, we are keep using the same phrase like who are you, who are you, who are you? Want to speed up your language learning? Get access to all of our best PDF cheat sheets for free. Just click the link in the description and sign up for your free lifetime account right now. Top 10 phrases your parents always say. Mm, what they say. Let's learn. Dikkatli ol. Dikkatli ol. Be careful. Dikkatli ol. Be careful. Yes, they always say, right? Especially when you're a child, I think, or baby, because you want to touch everywhere, you want to go everywhere, so they're dikkatli ol, like that. Um, usually mothers say. Sessiz ol. Ses, siz, ol. Be quiet. Sessiz ol. Be quiet. Uh, that's, for example, you and your family, your parents went, like, go somewhere, that you have to be actually quiet, like cinema, like theater, right? And then you want to be noisy because you're so excited. That time they can use this word, sessiz ol. They say like this, shh, sessiz ol. Usludur. Usludur. Behave. I'm sure every Turkish hears this 
from their parents. Usludur. Usludur. Behave. Usually, when you are a child, you want to know everything, you want to go everywhere, you want to explore, right? So sometimes you can make your parents go crazy. And that time, they are kind of tricking you. Like, if you behave well, then I'm going to buy you this. So in Turkish, usually parents are using this trick for their children. They say, they say this, like this kind of sentences, like, Eğer uslu durursan, sana şeker alacağım. It means, if you behave well, then I'm gonna buy you candy. So it's, eğer uslu durursan, uslu durmak, if you behave well, if you behave, then I'm gonna buy you candy, sana şeker alacağım. Ödevini yap. Ö, de, vi, ni, yap. Do your homework. Ödevini yap. Ödevini yap. Do your homework. Um, I think I never heard from my parents. I was a <laughs> very smart kid. No. Ödevini <laughs> yap. It's also, yes, a very common, very, very common saying in Turkey. Probably everywhere around the world, no? Like everyone, every parent, probably they are saying to their kid, just do your homework and then you can go and play. Üçe kadar sayacağım. Üçe kadar sayacağım. I'm going to count to three. Üçe kadar sayacağım. Üçe kadar sayacağım. I'm going to count to three. If you are lying to your parents and let's say you break something valuable and you're hiding, that time your parents say, Bişe kadar sayacağım, gerçeği söyle. It's like, I'm going to count to three, say the truth, <laughs> you break it. <laughs> Dur. Dur. Stop. Dur. Stop. Dur. Stop. Well, these, those parents might be really in trouble, I think. Yes, this is what I understand from this list. It's, um, yeah, well, not just parents, actually. Everyone is using dur, probably. Dur, dur, dur. Like, dur, stop, stop, stop. Ne dedin? Ne dedin? What did you say? Ne dedin? What did you say? Hmm, well, it might be in an angry situation or sometimes maybe your parents just don't hear you because you were speaking very quiet because you did something bad. <laughs> That time, yes, it can be used. They can say, ne dedin? What did you say? Şaka yapmıyorum. Şaka yapmıyorum. I'm not kidding. Şaka yapmıyorum. Şaka yapmıyorum. I'm not kidding. So again, if you did something bad and if your parents will punish you in return, they might they might say like I'm going to take your cell phone for one week or no television for one week and then they can say şaka yapmıyorum. I'm not kidding. Like no television. Ah, maybe they can say like this in Turkish. Bir hafta televizyon yok. It's like one week no television. I'm not kidding. Şaka yapmıyorum. Bir hafta televizyon yok. <gülüyor> ben sana ne dedim? Ben sana ne dedim? What did I just say? Ben sana ne dedim? Ben sana ne dedim? What did I just say? I think no matter how old you are. <gülüyor> When you do some mistake in life, and if your parents already warn you, then you will hear the sentence. Ben sana ne dedim? Like, I said you not to go there. Gitme demedim mi? <laughs> Whether you are a kid or a grown up, I'm sure you will hear. Dişlerini fırçaladın mı? Dişlerini fırçaladın mı? 
Dışladın Did you brush your teeth? Dişlerini fırçaladın mı? Did you brush your teeth? It's very important to give the habit to brushing the teeth every day for the kids. It's really important. So, this is yes, a very common phrase for parents to use. Dişlerini fırçaladın mı? Or hemen dişlerini fırçala. Hemen dişlerini fırçala means brush your teeth now. Want to speed up your language learning? Get access to all of our best PDF cheat sheets for free. Just click the link in the description and sign up for your free lifetime account right now. Top 10 phrases tourists should never use. It's a very delicate topic, I will be careful. <laughs> Bu iğrenç. That's disgusting. The first one is Bu iğrenç. Bu iğrenç. That's disgusting. <laughs> yeah, maybe you can say this for a food, probably. But it's under I can understand you if you don't like the food, so it's okay. Benim ülkem daha iyi. My country is better. The next one is Benim ülkem daha iyi. Benim ülkem daha iyi. My country is better. Okay, well, it depends on how you are saying this, I think. I mean, of course, in some fields, some countries are better. And if you're like talking about, if you're making a comparison, and if you're saying this, oh, my country is, I think, better on that, then it's fine. But if you're saying it in an offensive way, then it's not good, I think. Kendi memleketimde olmayı tercih ederdim. I'd rather be back home. Kendi memleketimde olmayı tercih ederdim. Kendi memleketimde olmayı tercih ederdim. I'd rather be back home. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> why? Then why did you come? <laughs> Kapa çeneni. Shut up. Kapa çeneni. Kapa çeneni. Shut up. <laughs> Actually, you know, like friends or family, sometimes we are using this and it's not very offensive. But again, it depends on the situation and it depends on some circumstances, right? So if if you're just, you know, joking, you can use it. It's not bad. Kültürünüz pek ilgimi çekmiyor. I'm not very interested in your culture. Kültürünüz pek ilgimi çekmiyor. Kültürünüz pek ilgimi çekmiyor. I'm not very interested in your culture. That's offensive. <laughs> you don't have to be interested, but mm, I don't know. I mean, if, if you're visiting that person's country, then I think it's better to be a bit more careful about what you are saying. Yeni insanlarla tanışmaktan hoşlanmıyorum. I don't like meeting new people. Yeni insanlarla tanışmaktan hoşlanmıyorum. Yeni insanlarla 
tanışmaktan hoşlanmıyorum. I don't like meeting new people. Hey, welcome bro, welcome to Antisocial Club. <laughs> it's fine, it's also understandable. I mean, I'm also not very good at meeting new people too. Uh, but what you mean is, I don't like meeting local people, then it might be offensive. Because, like, we think you're here so you can explore our culture or our people more. But if you're saying I don't like meeting them, then why you're here, kind of, <laughs> right? You should, I think you should be more open minded about it. Hadi McDonald's'a iyi verelim. Let's just eat at McDonald's. Hadi McDonald's'a iyi verelim. <gülüyor> Hadi McDonald's'ta iyi verelim. Let's just eat at McDonald's. <gülüyor> It's okay. <gülüyor> you know, I cannot say anything about it because my mom, she really hates tasting new food. <gülüyor> And anywhere we go together, she's just like, oh, let's go McDonald's. Let's go McDonald's. I'm like, no, mom, you should try it. You should try it. But she's like, no way, no way. So sometimes some people are not very, how should I say, not very okay with tasting new food. Like for example, if you're coming to Japan, maybe some people don't like raw fish, right? Like Turkey, usually we eat fish like well cooked. So maybe they wouldn't like to try sushi, for example. Well, I, I think it's kind of a very big loss for them. But it's also kind of, yeah, understandable. Sıkıcı. Boring. Sıkıcı. Sıkıcı. Boring. Oh, what is boring? <laughs> Maybe, let's see. In Turkey, what is boring? I don't know. Historical artifacts? Natural wonders? I don't think they are boring. I don't think so. Maybe, maybe the person you meet talks about some boring stuff. Then you can say it's boring. <laughs> don't say, <laughs> no. Just be nice. Bunun tadı berbat. This tastes awful. Bunun tadı berbat. Bunun tadı berbat. This tastes awful. Uh, that might be offensive. Not offensive, but like um, some local foods, you know, like Turkish delight, baklava or kebab or whatever. And of course, everyone cannot like it, right? Of course, there will be some people, I mean, who don't like it. But sometimes when they say, oh, it's like awful, I really didn't like it. I'm kind of, oh, really? Okay, I'm like that. <laughs> kind of sad. Sizler medeniyetsizsiniz. You people are uncivilized. Yeah, the good one is the last one, I think. Sizler medeniyetsizsiniz. Sizler medeniyetsizsiniz. You people are uncivilized. This is the top, <laughs> top word in this list, I think. It's really not good. It's really not good for any country, I think, right? Nowhere, it doesn't matter where you go. And one thing I mostly hear is also kind of offensive word. It's barbaric or like you're so barbaric like this. Sometimes I hear And I think this is the most offensive word, like, oh, you're so barbaric, or this is such a barbaric culture, like this. It's really sad and disappointing. Top 10 phrases you'll need for a date in Turkey. Okay, let's start. It's going to be a fun lesson. Benimle yemeğe çıkar mısın? Would you like to go out to a dinner with me? Benimle yemeğe çıkar mısın? Benimle yemeğe çıkar mısın? Would you like to go out to a dinner with me? So, I don't know the other countries, but usually in Turkey, guys ask to girls to go out to a date, usually. But I think maybe, like, recently it's changing, of course. Maybe girls are also asking. But this sentence, I usually hear from the guys. 
but this has to be like how should i say maybe you're talking for a long time not long time maybe you knew each other well you talk before and then maybe you can ask this like don't just say this to anyone you just met or you had crush just first maybe you talk you know each other and then you can say would you like to go out to a dinner with me and i don't know the answer of the person but yes bu hafta sonu boş musun are you free this weekend bu hafta sonu boş musun bu hafta sonu boş musun Are you free this weekend? So if you hear this sentence, probably you will think, um, this person has some feelings for me. Bu hafta sonu boş musun? So which means that person will ask you to go out. So if you say yes, evet. Bu hafta sonu boşum. Yes, I'm free this weekend. İşim yok. I have nothing special to do. İşim yok. But if you want to reject the person, then no, I'm sorry. Ah, uh, hayır. Özür dilerim. Özür dilerim. I'm sorry. I have things to do this weekend. Bu hafta sonu işim var. İşim var, which means I have things to do this weekend. Çok sevimlisin. You're so cute. Çok sevimlisin. You're so cute. Çok sevimlisin. Oh, it's so romantic here. <laughs> They usually use it for girls. But I think girls actually use it for guys too. Like if they say something funny or something, you know, like joyful, then girls can also say çok sevimlisin to a guy. We actually have another way to say you're cute. It's çok tatlısın. Girls will probably say like, oh, I took thoughtlessing y'all, like with this tone of voice to guys. It's just like çok sevimlisin. Uh, almost no difference, I think. Çok sevimlisin, çok tatlısın. It's really like, it's a really nice way to flirt, you know. It's really um, a cute sentence. Harika görünüyorsun. You look great. Harika görünüyorsun. You look great. Harika görünüyorsun. So it means you met with the person, right? And now you see this person in front of you. And maybe you would like to compliment to the dress or to the clothes that person is wearing. So you can say harika görünüyorsun. Or like let's say you will say something to your girlfriend. This clothes looks good on you. This dress looks good on you. You can say, Bu elbise sana çok yakışmış. Bu elbise means this dress looks good on you. Sana çok yakışmış. Harika görünüyorsun. Bu elbise sana çok yakışmış. It will be perfect. Çok güzel bir akşam oldu. That was a great evening. Çok güzel bir akşam oldu. Çok güzel bir akşam oldu. That was a great evening. Okay, so the dinner is over. Now you're just, maybe you just about to separate. Ah, that was a great evening. Then you say, çok güzel bir akşam oldu. And I think it's better to thank the person after you say, çok güzel bir akşam oldu. Just go with, teşekkür ederim. Seni arayacağım. I'll call you. Seni arayacağım. Seni arayacağım. I'll call you. Well, you can use the sentence, I'll call you, and grammatically it's not wrong. But I think it will sound like you will not call that person. So it's better to say the exact time. You can say, I'll call you tomorrow then. So, yarın seni arayacağım. It's better and it will sound like you're really into that person and you really mean to call again. So just say the exact time, like I'll call you tomorrow morning, I'll call you after I get back to home or whatever, but just say the time, I think it's better. Seni eve bırakayım. I will drive you home. 
Seni eve bırakayım. Seni eve bırakayım. I'll drive you home. Oh, so you have a car. <laughs> I'll call you tomorrow. No, okay. Mm, well, I think it's really kind of you <laughs> to say that. Seni eve bırakayım. Or you can maybe just say, Can I drive you home? Like, you can ask first. So say like this. Seni eve bırakayım mı? Seni eve bırakabilir miyim? Which means, can I drive you home? Like you're asking the permission. Seni eve bırakabilir miyim? Seni eve bırakabilir miyim? It will be more like romantic, I think. So I think in Turkey, usually guys ask uh, in the first date to drive you home. It's very general. It's very um, common. Like, can I drive you home? But I'm not sure if the person always accepts. It, I think it really depends on the person. Sometimes they do, if the date goes well. But sometimes they don't. But usually you hear the question like, can I drive you home? Seni tekrar görebilir miyim? Can I see you again? Seni tekrar görebilir miyim? Seni tekrar görebilir miyim? Can I see you again? I like that one. That's perfect. It's um, not very pushy, not very like full of self-confidence. Very kind. Can I see you again? Like, thank you for tonight. Can I see you again? Seni tekrar görebilir miyim? It's very gentle, I think. Pass for me. <laughs> Başka bir yere gidelim mi? Shall we go somewhere else? Başka bir yere gidelim mi? Başka bir yere gidelim mi? Nereye, nereye gidiyoruz? Sana bağlı tabii ki. Shall, shall we go somewhere else? Where? It depends on where. Mm, so, for example, after your dinner, that your dinner is over, and maybe you would like to walk in the beach after the dinner. Let's say you live somewhere close to the beach. And then, shall we go to the beach after our dinner is over? You can ask. But if you just directly say, Başka bir yere gidelim mi? then probably the person will ask you where, right? It depends on where. So, just be more specific, like about everything, about time, about the place you go. It will be always better, I think. Burayı nasıl buldun? What do you think of this place? Burayı nasıl buldun? Burayı nasıl buldun? What do you think of this place? Or, um, you don't need to say burayı. Nasıl buldun? What do you think? But instead of burayı, if you put the name of the place you go, like, restoranı nasıl buldun? What do you think about the restaurant? Sinema. Sinemayı nasıl buldun? It's also fine. So, nasıl buldun? This phrase, you can use it with any anything. So, anywhere you go. You can ask this question. Nasıl buldun? Want to speed up your language learning? Get access to all of our best PDF cheat sheets for free. Just click the link in the description and sign up for your free lifetime account right now. Top 10 tourist attractions in Turkey. Okay. Ayasofya. A ya sof ya. Hagia Sophia. The first one is. Aya Sofia, Hagia Sophia. Aya Sofia, hem cami, hem kilisedir. Aya Sofia, hem cami, hem kilisedir. The Hagia Sophia is both a mosque and a church. Yeah, I think the Hagia Sophia is one of the most famous landmarks of Istanbul. And it is made in 6th century, so very, very old, by Byzantine Empire. And it was a church, actually, first, yes. And then, after the Turkish conquer, it became mosque. The 
Turkish conqueror our Sultan Fatih uh, repurposed it as mosque and some minarets were added. Now, um, actually it is not open to public to pray, but you can go there and visit like tourist attraction, but you can not just pray there like daily. It's not like Blue Mosque anymore, but it's just like a museum, a nice place to see and visit for us. Bergama Bergama Pergamon The next one is Bergama Bergama Pergamon Bergama eski çağlarda önemli bir şehir merkeziydi. Bergama eski çağlarda önemli bir şehir merkeziydi. Pergamon was an important city center during ancient times. Pergamon is located in Izmir. Do you know Izmir? In the west side of Turkey. And there are so many ancient artifacts from this region. It's a very famous region. Some of these historical artifacts you can find in Berlin Pergamon Museum. Dolma Bahçe Sarayı Dolma Bahçe Sarayı Dolma Bahçe Palace Dolma Bahçe Sarayı Dolma Bahçe Palace Modern Türkiye'nin kurucusu Atatürk son günlerini İstanbul'daki Dolma Bahçe Sarayı'nda geçirmiştir. Modern Türkiye'nin kurucusu Atatürk son günlerini İstanbul'daki Dolma Bahçe Sarayı'nda geçirmiştir. Atatürk, the founder of modern Turkey, spent his last days in Dolmabahçe Palace in Istanbul. Dolmabahçe Palace is the largest palace in Turkey and it has rooms, I think, over 250. It's very, very large. And yes, Atatürk really spent his last days in this palace. Right now, today, you can go there and visit and see the room where he actually spent his last days. Ephes. Ephes. Ephesus. Ephes. Ephesus. Ephes, antik kenti İzmir'dedir. Ephes, antik kenti İzmir'dedir. The ancient city of Ephesus is in Izmir. Another historical place in Izmir. Izmir is really full of historical places, I think. It's a very, very beautiful city. So Ephesus actually, if I'm not wrong, was built in ancient Greek period. So very old and still exists. So, you know, the famous Artemis temple, the temple of Artemis. It is very famous temple and it is considered as one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. So it's definitely a must-see place if you're going to Turkey. Kapalı Çarşı Ka-pa-lı Çarşı Grand Bazaar Kapalı Çarşı Grand Bazaar Kapalı Çarşı'dan hediyelik eşya aldım. Kapalı çarşıdan hediyelik eşya aldım. I have bought some souvenirs from Grand Bazaar. Okay, so when we say Grand Bazaar, the first thing that comes up to my mind is carpets, <laughs> Turkish carpets. I'm not sure if you knew about it, However, it's very expensive, especially 
in Grand Bazaar. So you should maybe think twice before you actually buy one. But the design and everything, it's handmade. So it's going to be a really nice souvenir, but think about the price too. Pamukkale. Pa muk ka le. Pamukkale. Pamukkale. Pamukkale. Pamukkale travertenleri bir doğa harikasıdır. Pamuk kale travertenleri bir doğa harikasıdır. The travertines of Pamukkale is a natural wonder. Do you know the Pamukkale travertines? It's all white and then it looks like it's like a mountain. But it's all white. I'm gonna tell you the exact meaning, the literally what the pamukkale means. So pamuk means cotton, and kale means castle. So it literally means cotton castle because it looks like cotton castle. You can also there will be some like water in the travertines. You can enter. Usually people take photos there. It's so nice place to, you know, spend your day. Not just tourists actually. Local people are also going there to enjoy. So definitely a must see place. İzmir Saat Kulesi. İzmir Saat Kulesi. Clock Tower of Izmir. İzmir Saat Kulesi Clock Tower of Izmir İzmir Saat Kulesi 1901 yılında inşa edilmiştir. İzmir Saat Kulesi 1901 yılında inşa edilmiştir. The Clock Tower of Izmir was built in 1901. It's really nice. I used to live in Izmir before, so that's why I think I'm always talking very good things about Izmir. But the clock tower is a landmark of Izmir, and it is made by Abdulhamid II, uh, another Turkish Ottoman Sultan, to celebrate his 25th anniversary for the accession of the throne. And the actual clock in the tower it was a present from the German Emperor to the Ottoman Sultan. Sultan Ahmed Cami. Sultan Ahmed Cami. Blue Mosque. Sultan Ahmed Cami. Blue Mosque. Sultan Ahmed Cami, Avrupalılarca Mavi Cami olarak adlandırılır. Sultan Ahmet Cami Avrupalılarca Mavi Cami olarak adlandırılır. The Sultan Ahmet Mosque is called the Blue Mosque by Europeans. The Blue Mosque yet the most famous, I think, the landmark of Turkey. Blue Mosque and Hagia Sophia, they are next to each other. And Blue Mosque is made by the order of Sultan Ahmed. And of course, that is why its name is Sultan Ahmed. So why Blue Mosque, maybe you guys are thinking, right? Because of the interior design. The interior design, it's full of iznik tiles, like blue tiles, all over the mosque, inside, I mean. That is why it is called Blue Mosque. But in terms of design, it's kind of mixture of like islamic architecture and also there are some influences from byzantine architecture kind of like hagia sophia but it's really really famous and one more thing about this blue mosque is it has six minarets and blue mosque was the first mosque in turkey that has six minarets Topkapı Sarayı Top Ka Pı 
Sarayı. Topkapı Palace. Topkapı Sarayı. Topkapı Palace. Osmanlı padişahları uzun yıllar Topkapı Sarayı'nı kullanmıştır. Osmanlı padişahları uzun yıllar Topkapı Sarayı'nı kullanmıştır. Topkapı Palace was used by Ottoman sultans for a long time. So, first things first. First, Topkapı Palace is located in Istanbul. Because Istanbul was the capital city of Ottoman Empire. I mean, after the conquer of Istanbul, of course. And now, maybe you know, there are so many Turkish dramas about the Ottoman period of Turkey. And you can see Topkapı Palace, I think, in all of them. It's really famous palace, very large. And inside, there is a very important historical artifact. It's a diamond called Kaşıkçıl. So if you go to Topkapı Palace, try to find it. It is called Kaşıkçıl Elması. It's a very large diamond. Kapadokya. Kapadokya. Kapadokya. Okay, the next one is Cappadocia. Cappadocia. Cappadocia, peri bacaları denilen doğa harikalarıyla ünlüdür. Cappadocia, peri bacaları denilen doğa harikalarıyla ünlüdür. Cappadocia is famous for the natural wonders called fairy chimneys. When you say Cappadocia, the first thing that comes up to my mind is balloons, right? Very colorful balloons, so you can have a really nice Cappadocia view. And do you know what is fairy chimney? There are so many of the fairy chimneys all over Cappadocia. It's a natural wonder, really, not human-made nothing about the humans, all about the nature. So let's say this is the ground and it comes like this and then there is like a roof on it. So it looks like a house actually and as far as I know people were actually living there and still some people are living there. Top 10 phrases to know when having a baby. Emzirmek To breastfeed İlk altay Bebeği emzirmek çok önemli. İlk altı ay bebeği emzirmek çok önemli. It's important to breastfeed the baby during the first six months. So baby means bebek in Turkish. Baby, bebek. And do you know how to say feeding bottle? The baby's bottle. It is called biberon. Biberon, bebek. Önlük takmak. Önlük takmak. To put on a bib. Önlük takmak. To put on a bib. Bebek maması yedirmeye başlamadan önce önlük takmayı unutma. Bebek maması yedirmeye başlamadan önce Önlük takmayı unutma. Don't forget to put on a bib before you start to feed the baby food. So, where did you put the baby first to feed the baby, right? It is called bebek sandalyesi in Turkish and it literally means baby chair. Bebek sandalyesi. Kıyafet değiştirmek. Kı Ya fet de iş tirmek to change clothes. Kıyafet değiştirmek to change clothes. Çocuğun kıyafetlerini değiştirirken çorabını ters giydirmişim. Çocuğun kıyafetlerini değiştirirken çorabını ters 
giydirmişim. I have put on the socks wrong when I was changing the child's clothes. So changing clothes, kıyafetlerini değiştirmek, we don't just use for the babies, we use for everyone. Because clothes, like, it's safe for everyone, right? So kıyafet, elbise, you can just use this phrase for everyone, not just for babies. Ninni söylemek. Nin, ni, söylemek. To sing a lullaby. Ninni söylemek. To sing a lullaby. Saatlerce ninni söyledim ama yine de uyumadı. Saatlerce ninni söyledim ama yine de uyu Madı. I sang a lullaby for hours, but she didn't sleep anyway. Let me tell you a Turkish lullaby. I am sorry for my voice. I am not a great singer, but I'll do it for you. Are you ready? Dandini dandini dastana Danalar girmiş bostana Kobostancı danayı <laughs> I hope you liked it. <laughs> so about the meaning of this lullaby, let me tell you, I'm sure you will laugh when you hear, because it's about a farmer and there's a cow. <laughs> so this cow is a very nasty cow and it enters the farmer's farm and then you are saying to farmer, hey farmer, please be careful, the cow will eat your corpse. <laughs> this is the lullaby. <laughs> Kestirmek. Kestirmek. To take a nap. Kestirmek. To take a nap. Çocukların gün içinde en az bir saat kestirmesinde fayda var. Çocukların gün içinde en az bir saat Kestirmesinde fayda var. It's good for children to take a nap, at least for an hour during the day. I was not taking a nap when I was a child. I didn't like to do it, I think. And you don't do what I do. <laughs> Bebek koltuğu satın almak. Bebek koltuğu satın Almak. To buy a car seat. Bebek koltu satın almak. To buy a car seat. İkizlerimiz için iki tane bebek koltu satın almamız gerekiyor. İkizlerimiz için iki tane bebek koltu satın almamız Gerekiyor. We need to buy two car seats for our twins. So in cars, you usually see like there is a sign, like a symbol, and it is to warn you that there is baby in the car, right? Baby on board, like this. So in Turkish, of course, we also have the same sign, and it says "dikkat bebek var." It's baby on board, so like there is baby. Be careful. Dikkat, bebek var. Beslemek. Beslemek. To feed. Beslemek. To feed. Bebeğimi doğal gıdalarla beslemeye çalışıyorum. Bebeğimi doğal gıdalarla beslemeye çalışıyorum. I am trying to feed my baby with natural food. In Turkey, I think we are lucky that we have so many natural food in terms of vegetables and fruits. Um, so I think compared to some other countries, I feel lucky in that sense because you can find it anywhere, especially if you are living in a rural area in Turkey. There are so many natural foods to feed your baby. Bebek arabasını sürmek Bebek arabasını 
sürmek. To push a stroller. Bebek arabasını sürmek. To push a stroller. Bebek arabası sürmenin kolları bu kadar yorduğunu bilmiyordum. Bebek arabası sürmenin kolları bu kadar yorduğunu bilmiyordum. I didn't know that pushing a stroller tires out the arms this much. Kitap okumak. Kitap okumak. To read a book. Kitap okumak. To read a book. Çocuklara her gece kitap okuyorum. I read books to the children every day. There are so many nice Turkish stories as well, so you can read your children. For example, Ali Baba ve Kırk Haramiler. It's, as you can guess, Ali Baba. It's like a legendary character. Ali Baba, it's a very helpful and lovely character. And also, there are 40, like, gangsters, we call them Harami. And the story is about their, how should I say, relationship. How they come together and what happens. So, this kind of story. And there is one another Turkish story, which is also very fun and lovely, in my opinion. It is called Keloğlan. Keloğlan means, like, the guy without hair. <laughs> and it's also very, very funny stories. And he has many adventures and many stories and many books. Banyo yaptırmak. Banyo yaptırmak. To bathe. Bebeğe banyo yaptırırken suyun çok sıcak olmadığından emin ol. Bebeğe banyo yaptırırken suyun çok sıcak olmadığından emin ol. When bathing the baby, make sure that the water is not too hot. Yes, it shouldn't be too hot, right? It should be warm. Not very cold, not very hot, but warm. Want to speed up your language learning? Get access to all of our best PDF cheat sheets for free. Just click the link in the description and sign up for your free lifetime account right now. Top 10 ways to prepare your travel. Güzergahı belirlemek. Güzergahı belirlemek. To choose your destination. First one, güzergahı belirlemek. To choose your destination. Henüz gezi güzergahını belirlemedik. Henüz gezi güzergahını belirlemedik. We haven't chosen our travel destination yet. You will see this word in your navigation system. Güzergahı belirle. So, it's a really, really useful word, I think. Gezi rehberi satın almak. Gezi rehberi satın almak. To buy a guidebook. Gezi rehberi satın almak. To buy a guidebook. İyi bir gezi rehberi satın almak istiyorum. İyi bir gezi Rehberi satın almak istiyorum. I want to buy a good guidebook. In Turkey, for buying a guidebook, you can go to famous tourism destinations, like tourist spots. Then you will see there will be lots of guidebooks there, but usually sometimes it's Mm, sometimes actually it's a bit pricey so maybe it's better to buy a guidebook before you come to Turkey like from your own language but still if you need a guidebook then of course you can buy in Turkey in tourism destinations like tourist spots or bookstores in Turkey you can find para biriktirmek para biriktirmek 
To save money. Para biriktirmek. To save money. Bu kadarcık maaşla para biriktirmem imkansız. Bu kadarcık maaşla para biriktirmem imkansız. It's impossible to save money with a wage like this. In the beginning, I say bu kadarcık, right? Usually, the word, the phrase is bu kadar. Like, it's like to importance of the situation. But when you add cık, it makes the meaning bigger, actually. Like, my wage is so low. Like, bu kadar cık maaş. It means, I understand that the wage is really low. So, bu kadar cık maaşla. Uçak rezervasyonu yapmak. Uçak rezer vas yo no yapmak to book a flight uçak rezervasyonu yapmak to book a flight uçak rezervasyonunu yaptın mı uçak rezer vas yo no no yaptın mı have you booked your flight if not yet then We are Turkish Airlines. <laughs> Sorry for the commercial. <laughs> Maliyetleri araştırma. Maliyetleri araştırma. To research the costs. Maliyetleri araştırma. To research the costs. Karadeniz gezisi için maliyetleri araştırıyorum. Kara de Niz gezisi için maliyetleri araştırıyorum. I'm researching the costs for a Black Sea trip. If you're going to Black Sea region in Turkey, then two things you need to know that the Black Sea region is famous with its fish and black tea. Black tea is very delicious there. And the other thing you need to know is that the people in Black Sea region are very friendly. So they will be very see they will be very happy to see like tourists who visit their region. İşten izin istemek. İşten izin istemek. To request vacation time. İşten izin istemek. To request vacation time. Eğer müdür iyi günündeyse işten izin isteyeceğim. Eğer müdür iyi günündeyse işten izin isteyeceğim. If the manager is having a good day, I will request vacation time. I don't know what to say. In Turkey, I think requesting vacation time is not as hard as some other countries. So, the conditions of work, I think it's not very hard and not very easy as well. So, it's really true actually. If your manager is having a good day, then it's really better to ask the vacation time on his good day. <laughs> Kalacak yer tutmak. Kalacak yer tutmak. To book accommodations. Kalacak yer tutmak. To book accommodations. İnternetten kalacak yer tuttum. İnternetten kalacak yer tuttum. I've booked an accommodation through the internet. Yeah, in internet you can find really cheap price, but it's better to check where you are going before you're actually going, because there are so many hotels in Turkey and so many places to stay. So you need to be very careful before you're going, whether it's like matching with your needs or what you're expecting or not. Uluslararası ehliyet almak. Ehliyet almak. 
to obtain an international driving license. Uluslar arası ehliyet almak. To obtain an international driving license. Sık sık seyahat edenlerin uluslararası ehliyet almasında fayda var. Sık sık seyahat edenlerin uluslar arası ehliyet almasında fayda var. People who travel often should obtain an international driving license. So if you if you have an international driving license, you can drive in Turkey as well. And maybe from one city to another, you can just rent a car, especially if the weather is really nice. Then you can go from one city to another by car with your friends. I think it sounds a really, really like fun trip. Why not? Pasaport yenilemek. Pa sa port yenilemek. To renew your passport. Pasaport yenilemek. To renew your passport. Süresi doldu için pasaportumu yenilemem gerekti. Süresi doldu için pasaportumu yenilemem gerekti. I had to renew my passport because it was expired. It's really important. I mean, before you're going to abroad, like if I don't know, I think there are some rules about it, right? Like it it shouldn't be like at least like you should be using at least for another three months or something like this. So it's better to check before you come to Turkey. So there will be no problems. I think it's better to be much more careful. Eşya toplama. Eşya toplama. To pack. Eşya toplama. To pack. Eşya toplamak çok yorucu. Eşya toplamak çok yorucu. Packing is very tiring. So I think um, eşya toplamak, packing, it's okay. But I think you're packing for a travel in this example, right? You can also say like preparing your luggage. Then you can say bavulumu hazırlamak. Bavul is like your suitcase luggage. Bavulumu hazırlamak. It's also very common. 10 most romantic ideas for a date. Let's see. Mum ışığında akşam yemeği. Candlelit dinner. Mum ışığında bir akşam yemeği sırasında evlenme teklifi etmeyi düşünüyorum. Mum ışığında bir akşam yemeği sırasında evlenme teklifi etmeyi düşünüyorum. I'm planning to propose during a candlelit dinner. Wow, very romantic. <laughs> so, yeah, then it means you're dating for a long time. So it's not a first date. But I think for a first date, it's also not a bad idea to go to a candlelit dinner. Why not? Uzun bir yürüyüşe çıkmak. To go for a long walk. Sahilde uzun bir yürüyüşe çıkmak ister misin? Sahilde uzun bir yürüyüşe çıkmak ister misin? Would you like to go for a long walk on the beach? It depends on how long. <laughs> Again, it's if it's a first date or if it's like the, you know, first one or two months of the relationship, then probably I would like to show the best of myself, right? So, I would like to wear some high heels. So, if I am wearing high heels, please don't ask me. Let's go for a long walk. <laughs> I wouldn't like it. Bowling'e gitmek. To go bowling. İlk buluşmamızda bowling'e gittik. İlk buluşmamızda bowling'e gittik. 
We went to bowling in our first date. Yeah, it's a good first date idea, I think, bowling. It was not very common in Turkey until recently, as far as I know, as far as my <laughs> experience. And the word bowling, as you can see, we don't have the Turkish, actual Turkish word for it. So we kind of changed the English version to Turkish. We don't have W voice in Turkey. So that is why we made it V. So we say V, V voice. And it became bowling, bowling. Aquarium'a gitmek. To go to the aquarium. Deniz anılarını izlemek için akvaryuma gitmek istiyorum. Deniz anılarını izlemek için akvaryuma gitmek istiyorum. I want to go to aquarium to watch the jellyfish. It's a good idea. It's really nice, I think, date idea. Especially if your girlfriend is from somewhere like Ankara. They don't have sea, right? So maybe they are more curious about fish, sea. So aquarium is definitely a good idea. Opera'ya gitmek. To go to the opera. Sevgilimle opera'ya gitmek istiyorum. Ama biletler tükenmiş. Sevgilimle Opera'ya gitmek istiyorum ama biletler tükenmiş. I want to go to the opera with my lover, but the tickets are sold out. Mm, that's too bad. But not just opera. I think musicians are also very interesting to go on a date. For example, <laughs> I would be really happy if my lover would buy tickets for Harry Potter <laughs> concert. You know, the symphony orchestra was playing Harry Potter music. That's a really nice idea to go on a date. Can you buy for me? <laughs> Maybe you guys know where I'm from, right? Antalya. And in Antalya, during summer season, there is ballet and opera festival, and it is held in Aspendos, which is an ancient amphitheater. From all over the world, not just Turkey, actually, also from Russia or other European countries, people are coming there, I mean, to Aspendos Amphitheater to perform ballet and opera. So maybe if you're dating your girlfriend or boyfriend in the summer season in Antalya, <laughs> it's a really nice idea to join this festival. It's very fun and very romantic. Hayvanat bahçesine gitmek. To go to the zoo. Hayvanat bahçesine gitmek istiyorsanız, sabah erken çıksanız iyi olur. Hayvanat bahçesine gitmek istiyorsanız, sabah erken çıksanız iyi olur. If you want to go to the zoo, you better wake up early in the morning. Well, if it's summertime, then like to go to zoo in afternoon would be really painful for you i think because it's so hot and you'll be outside all day so yes that's a good idea to wake up early and there are so many animals to see so waking up early is always a good idea when you're going to a date picnic yapmak to have a picnic picnic yapmak için harika bir yer keşfettim picnic Yapmak için harika bir yer keşfettim. I discovered a great place to have a picnic. Having a picnic, it's very common in Turkey. And not just for a date. Also, Turkish families really enjoy having a picnic with their family and children. So, during picnic, we usually... Eat Turkish food, mostly Turkish breakfast, mostly. And also we play games like football, volleyball, and we listen music sometimes from the car. <laughs> Because Turkish people, they come to the picnic with their cars, and they open the doors, and they open the music, and then they listen while they're eating their food. 
It's really fun actually. And you can you can sit on the ground or in some places in Turkey, some picnic places, they have tables, like wooden tables. So it depends on the place. But it's a really nice idea to go on a picnic. Akşam yemeği yemek ve film izlemek. To have dinner and see a movie. Cuma gecesi planımız güzel bir akşam yemeği yemek ve film izlemek. Cuma gecesi planımız güzel bir akşam yemeği yemek ve film izlemek. Our Friday night plan is to have a nice dinner and see a movie. It's a really good idea. I think it's my favorite in this list. So the movie, it's very important which one you choose. For example, if you're choosing a scary movie, oh, it's not okay for me. I don't like scary movies. Maybe a romantic movie would be nice. Or a drama. Why not? So do you need my advice for a romantic Turkish movie? Let me give you one. It is called Kelebeyin Rüyası in Turkish and in English The Dream of a Butterfly. It's a really great movie. Romantic, very dramatic, very sad. So you will have all these emotions all together. It's about two young poets and their relationship with one girl because they are searching for a girl who can influence them and who can let them write poems. It's a really interesting movie. Vapura binmek To take a ferry ride İstanbul'da vapura binmek çok romantik bir etkinlik olabilir. İstanbul'da vapura binmek çok romantik bir etkinlik olabilir. Taking a ferry ride in Istanbul could turn out to be a very romantic event. It's pretty romantic, if you ask me. So, you can just take a ferry ride with your girlfriend, boyfriend, with your lover. And then, do you know the Turkish bread, simit? Just buy some simit. And then you can feed seagulls. <laughs> do you know seagulls? You just feed them and talk with your lover. Hey, like, how are you? <laughs> it's pretty romantic. Müzeye gitmek. To go to the museum. Hoşlandığım çocuğa birlikte müzeye gitmeyi teklif etmeyi düşünüyorum ama sıkıcı bulabileceğinden korkuyorum. Hoşlandığım çocuğa birlikte müzeye gitmeyi teklif etmeyi düşünüyorum ama sıkıcı bulabileceğinden korkuyorum I'm thinking about asking the boy I like to go to the museum together but I'm afraid he may find it boring not most of the museums are boring I don't think so there are some really nice art museums For example, in Turkey, Istanbul, there is Istanbul Modern Art Museum and they are usually have, they have exhibitions about contemporary art and it's really fun, very interesting. So, keep that in mind. Want to speed up your language learning? Take your very first lesson with us. You'll start speaking in minutes and master real conversations. Sign up for your free lifetime account. Just click the link in the description.